in now, so I better do the sound check. Hi, you're with Scott. Ganji Kid, midnight, always midnight. It's your right ear, it's your left ear. I can't reach over there to do left and right. Oh, fuck, all right, all right. This is your right. And over there, this, this is your left ear. All right, then. All right, you're happy with that now? You're happy I had to reach over there. God. <laughs> okay, can I see it's working? God. <laughs> right, okay, yeah, it's working. I heard myself, so God. I heard myself, so God. That's it, yeah. Um, so, what we're doing today, Genshin Impact, I'm reacting to this. How gacha games trick players into spending thousands. Asman reacts to Atrioc. It's a 50 minute video, but I do want to watch it and react to it. I want Asman in there as well doing his reaction because context, quite like it. So we're going to watch this video of someone watching a video and re I'm reacting to a react. I know, I know. Maybe I should just watch the original and react to that, but I like having Asman there in the corner as well. So we're doing that. I haven't even watched it yet. We're doing that. I feel a bit, uh, I had a funny night last night. I had the cat and the dog on my bed. The cat got me up at like four in the morning to leave the room. Oh, all right, I'll open the door for you. All right, I'll go back to sleep. Can't even really remember doing that. But then I woke up a little bit later to find the... What's the dog eating in the bed? What's he eating? Oh, he's been sick. Oh, so I had to get up and get all the, you know, stuff off the bed. And then like go back to bed, essentially. Like, you know, chuffer. So I've had a... I don't I feel right Monday today. It's supposed to be Mental Health Monday on today's stream. 20 minutes from Mental Health Monday. So I thought, I just... Come on early. I'm not really... I had a bit of a bash on Genshin just a minute ago. We're going to play some today. Let's have a quick look at that. It's quite hot in here again. Um, raining and horrible today in the UK. So a bit funny weather, a bit humid. Uh, I've got this Archon trial. Sorry, Archon quest. And in order to do it, we've got to do these story quests. That is on my list of like things to do. I think we're braced, like the interlude chapter is all we're worried about here, the interlude chapter, so that when Sumeru goes live in two days, we're ready. But we don't, we're not worried, we're not actually worried, because I think we're okay with that, I think we're okay with that. Something else really big to show you, Genshin-wise, which is, so if we get through the React, and if my mum pops around with some chocolate milkshake for me, because I feel rubbish, <laughs> uh, if I get some chocolate soy milk, <laughs> which might happen, uh, and uh, if yeah, if I get through the react and we feel like we might do some Genshin Impact world quests, you know, story quests, whatever it's needed, we might get onto a bit of that. But I wanted to show you this. I'm trying to find where it is in my brain. I don't know if I can know where it is. Is it notices? It's notices. Check this out. New story unlocked. Archon Quest Chapter Three. That's not Archon Quest unlocked yet, but that's what we're worried about. I want to be on that. Don't want to be behind, I want to be on that. Even though I'm not going to do the story on day one, I'm going to run around and explore. I want to be on that. So, uh, that's out, but this, pre-installation, not that. Where is it? Where's the thing? There's more. There's a... Uh, where's it gone? The new banner. They showed me the banners. It was on here, and they showed me the banners. Like, how am I not finding it now? Do they delete these things after they've shown them you? Oh, they're called events, aren't they? Are they? There we go, event wish. There we go, the event wish. Look what's coming up. Look what's coming up. I'll have to move it around on the screen for you. Look what's coming up. Hello, Josie. Hello. I'm supposed to be doing Mental Health Monday, but I'm not. I'm doing... I feel rubbish, so I feel like doing more Genshin. I couldn't even edit today, you know. Couldn't even get my editing brain together. I did a half an edit, and I thought, if I'm not vibing with it, then it's not going to come out good, is it? So I just have to put it down. Uh, I think it's because I got woke up in the middle of the night by the dog being sick on my bed. And then I had to deal with the dog being sick on my bed. What am I looking for here? Genshin Impact. I can't move it around, because it's Genshin Impact is full screen. That's what's doing my brain in. All right. So I'll have to move. Look who's with it. Look who's with it. This is the brand new banner that's going to come out on Sumeru Day 1. I'm not even worried. Tignari, it would be nice to have him. It would be nice to have him. He's the new, you know, the lead, leading with this new character, aren't they? Tignari. Sort of very Zelda. <laughs> very Zelda. They've made him quite androgynous. They've given him in the wolf ears. Lupine ears, actually. Would you say? No, not Lupine or Volpine. I, no, Lupine. Lupine ears, like rabbit-like. Even though Rex Lapis is rabbit, isn't he? 
anyway look there's a new character he's green he's new and he's all wonderful and everyone's going to want to get him and run around and five star Tignaris and on the, the like the supplemental you've got this new girl E. coli is the name E. coli like the bacteria E. coli and there she is and you can get her as well so many people will but look what they've done to us Fischl well everyone's got Fischl we know they've got Fischl because they've just done the fucking summer some of my crack everyone's got fishel so that's a cheek because now you can make a five star fishel but like what's that about oh my kilobytes are dropping don't even start me on the Coli E. coli will be free in an event Coli E. E. coli I read it as E. coli in my brain I read it as E. coli uh, Coli E. will be free in an event so we're going to get her free anyway so fishel and Coli E. you're going to get free it's going to be about constellations isn't it and Diona, I've already got her. Pleased with seeing it, actually. Pleased with seeing it, because I've already got Diona, so I don't want to wish for her. So, I mean, if I did a few poops at this, I'd probably get myself a Diona, an official constellation, and that's that. Like, I'm not into it. It's fine. I'm happy with this. I'm actually happy. I'll tell you for why. Look, I'm not going to wish for Tignari. I'm going to let it slide. I know it sounds a bit weird, because it's day one of Sumeru, and I've got, like, 10,000 primos but I'm not going to wish for Tignari I'm going to let it slide save up for one I really want and that's good because these other characters on the side banner and the fact that I'm going to get E. coli for free e and Tignari's come in on the standard banner oh well there you go like this is like a deliberately don't waste your wishes banner isn't it they've even put like Fischl they should have put fucking Kaya on it uh, so yeah we don't have to wish for that there's this one, which is the same thing, but with Zhongli. So I don't have to wish for that because he's got a brown coat on. Like, he's just quite drab, quite tiresome and boring for me. And I'm sure he's very good and his skills are excellent. And he's a cool dude and, you know, he's a uh, strong, silent type or whatever. F former God decided to retire. I just, he gave away his Gnosis in a trade. You know, he's one of them Gnosis hander over us. So, pfft. So I can skip that. That was, yeah, skip that. So there we go. That's all good, isn't it? That's the new stuff. I can skip it all. <laughs> but that's cool because obviously we're saving up these wishes. I don't know if you can see through the chat there. 10,600. I've been grubbing up a few extra ones by doing this. My little wish compass, my little chest compass. And I've just been running around. I've got 100% now on Winwell Highland. Gale Song Hill. I've been running around Starfell Valley just collecting up a few, like grubbing up all the last chests in Mondstadt because I feel rubbish today. So I've just been in Mondstadt. And it's been raining in Mondstadt. Any longer, my books would have gotten wet. The book, the rain just stopped, but it has been raining in Mondstadt just like it's raining here. And just like I had to get up in the middle of the night to clean up dog sick. <laughs> I just don't feel like myself today. I don't know what it is. I'll come around. Anyway, so that's all in hand. We know what we're doing. If we can get through the React, we're going to go and do... Oh, wait, the kilobytes again. It's like they're stable, but then every now and then they drop down to red and then they go stable. So I'm thinking that's going to be a Wi-Fi thing. We didn't ring the internet people today because it just all started working again. But I'm thinking I'm going to have to plug in at the wall on Wednesday. I hope everything's okay for you on the stream. I'm going to have to plug in at the wall on Wednesday. I and mean, it looks okay. I just think there might be a few juddering issues. Yeah, anyway, so... Where's my Firefox? Do you know, I keep looking up and pressing... I've got a second monitor and it's up there instead of over there. So I will fix this in the long run, but it's a little bit of another expense. And I've got one of these. This was actually a Christmas present. So I've had it since Christmas. And I'm such a chuffer. Got one of these, look. So I don't have to look up there and click and click. I can set it to this. Set it on the stream deck. I don't know how to use it. I'm going to have to learn. It's like I have to take a day off to learn how to use a stream deck. Good though. It's lagging a bit there. It's better than yesterday yeah it is definitely better i can tell but i could when the little thing drops i mean i've been playing genshin today and it's not been rubbish but when the little thing drops and i see the red light flash i just why is it doing that why is it doing that you know anyway i'll, I'll ring virgin media if we have any more problems and on wednesday i'll plug in at the wall just to be sure 
hopefully on Wednesday because it comes out at five in the morning. I'll I'll come on in the evening. I've decided so it gives you all the like you were saying you want to play the fucking game yourself. So give you all a chance to run around yourselves on Wednesday, and then I'll come on in the evening, and you won't be seeing anything new. Through, you know, it's just through my eyes new. That'll be all right, won't it? Um, what am I doing? I'm going to Firefox. So we know what we're doing in Genshin. If we can get through this React, then we can play a bit of Genshin. Nothing heavy, just maybe a story quest. I've got the calm, relaxing music from Genshin playing, so I'm just going to stop that. And this is Asmongold reacting to Atrioc, talking about how gacha games trick players into spending thousands. I should... Right, cut. <laughs> This is for the, the edit. Hi, you're with Scott. I'm Ganji Kid. It's midnight. It's always midnight. This is your right ear and your left ear. This is in mono. Asmongold. How gacha games trick players into spending thousands. Asmongold reacts to Atrioc. Let's go. Asmongold recently spent over a thousand dollars in Tower of Fantasy. I play Genshin Impact months and months and months all the way through the entire main story. Got loads of characters. Never spent a penny. Well, I've been to the bathroom, but I haven't... I won't swipe for the internet game. You understand what I'm saying? So, both got a different perspective on it. Going to learn about gachas. I think I already know a few of these tricks, but I'll be interested to see if there's anything new to me. And I want to react. And I want to react with Asman in context because we've been talking about his journey not playing Genshin Impact so far uh, recently. So, we'll be talking about that. Okay, that's my introduction. And uh, just... You know, just for us here on stream. Do you remember I made a little react and I said, uh, we talked about Asman and gambling. And I said that, you know, it might be a, a way of him allowing himself to gamble on stream. And we had a conversation. I think Snips was talking to me and uh, the video is reacting to is over a year old. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> it's him that I want as well. It's his perspective on it because I like his machinations in his mind. So I'd like to hear his perspective. And I'm going to react really to him reacting to this. <laughs> But also, I'm reacting to this. It's all a big, it's all a big circle jerk, right? Look, the um, the thing I also wanted to say is I mentioned the other week that when you gamble, you have to increase the amount of money you gamble for it to mean anything, and that you might as well stick a zero on the end every time you. And and it turned out Asman stuck. We reacted to Asman spends a hundred dollars in Tower of Fantasy, and then it went on, and I haven't reacted. I haven't done every single episode of his, but he went on to spend thousands, <laughs> over a thousand. I don't know if you heard me counting. I did over a thousand. So, have you already seen this video? Is this like rubbish content? If it's rubbish content, I don't have to do it at all. Let's see. Also, it's a good test to see if my fucking internet works, doesn't it? So, I've got Genshin running in the background, and we're going to watch this. What this is going to be. The psychological warfare of gacha games. That's what it's about. And the tricks oh, they loud. use to part you from your money. Sorry. And how... They're being adopted. Right, my initial reaction, first of all, is this guy is fucking shouting at me. Like, why is he shouting at me? Did as the future of video games. But first, I want to Damn. start by having you watch a very short video that maybe illustrates the point I'm trying to make. Okay, he's, he's quieting down now. Take care. Okay. About <laughs> gotcha games. We <laughs> played the first chapter. What the hell is this? I have no idea what this is at all. Before we go any further, there's something I should have said. <laughs> should have said this right at the start. Edit this right at the start. Cut. Edit this right at the start. I don't even think. I don't even think Genshin Impact is really a gacha game. Although, of course, it's a fucking gacha game. Oh, you get your characters through the gacha system. Oh, your wishes. Oh, you do your primos. Oh, yeah, but. Genshin Impact is like an ARPG, an action RPG, isn't it? Like an action role-playing game. Like you run around, you do all this stuff, you climb, you find chests, you level up, you gather characters through a gacha system. Oh, yeah. It's like, a, for me, Genshin Impact is a wonderful ARPG with a gacha system tacked on the side for the monetization. But a gacha game for me would be, uh, I put my money in, I get my egg out, and that's the game. You know, that's like the whole thing of a gacha. Like, I want to show you this before we go any further, actually. The original, because it's a Japanese, but it's not like, you know, novel to Japan, is it? But um, an actual gacha game, like, like, obviously they look, these are all computer games now, aren't they? But original, I'm talking about an arcade gacha game. Like, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about gumball machines. That's a gacha machine. 
And so what you're looking at on the outside is, oh, I want a dinosaur or I want a transformer. And then you put your money in, you twist your thing and you don't get a dinosaur or a transformer. You have to get lucky to get a dinosaur or a transformer. Gacha game, gachapon, it's Japanese. So that's straightforward, isn't it? But also, like when I was a kid, we had Kinder Eggs. I've said this in a different video, but I, when I was a kid, we had Kinder Eggs and that's a gacha system. You guarantee the chocolate, but oh, is it a little picture? You guarantee the chocolate, but you don't guarantee what's in the egg, do you? So that's a gacha system. It's little pictures again today. Uh, there was another, like we had a sort of, um, I don't know if I, uh, this is the black, this, this won't come up, Black Country Museum Arcade Games. In the Black Country Museum, this is actually it as well. This is actually the fucking room. So this is going to make like very little sense really to everyone. But the Black Country Museum is a living museum in the UK. Oh, come on. Show me a big picture, baby. Show me a big picture. It's a living museum in the UK. It's like a place with all cobbled streets and old buildings. And they have these people that work there that dress up as old 1800s people. And you walk around and you play as a kid would in the 1800s. Like you're walking around this living museum. You get the picture. And in the Black Country Museum, they've got this arcade hall. And in the 1800s, they did have like fruit machines. And like, look, look at these things. Have a go. Flick your you coin round and you might win something. I don't know if that's the exact one in the corner there. They might have took it out. But when I was a kid, they had one just like this made out of wood. And at the bottom was a drawer. It looked like a cigarette machine. I don't know if you <laughs> shouldn't show this to kids on the internet. Have you ever seen a cigarette machine? Like this. Come on, image in a new tab. Show me one in a big open image in a new tab. Show me a big one. I don't even want the big ones. Tools, size, large. Come on, this is going to ruin my edit. It's going to give me more to fucking edit now, isn't it? Cigarette machines with drawers at the bottom. I suppose the closer thing that you would have would be a Coca-Cola machine, wouldn't it? Or a... That's not a big picture, is it? Why would it say, I've asked for large and that wasn't large. So what do you want me to do about that, you fucking stupid internet? Anyway, it looked like a cigarette machine. And it had a wooden drawer at the bottom. A drawer. And what I did was I put my hand in the drawer and up through the machine. And inside was all these little boxes, you know, ready lined up to eject when people put their money in. And I pulled out all the little boxes and inside were all the toys. So I ripped, I ripped the gacha machine. I'd got my arm up inside it and I pulled everything out because I'm naughty. At the Black Country Museum. <laughs> So that's gacha games. Actual gacha games are actually just the gacha game. So I don't believe Genshin Impact really, the, the, like, you know, in, in nowadays, okay, you're going to say gacha game, you're going to say computer game, where you get your characters through a process of wishing or, you know, rolling. Why can I not have big pictures again? Like, I, I should have a system on this Google where I can't get little pictures. Just don't show me little pictures. It just fucking annoys me. Uh, a gacha game is one where you get your characters. You know what we're talking about. Genshin Impact, all this. You get your characters. It's not just Genshin Impact, is it? There's loads of others. Uh, notably at the moment, Tower of Fantasy. And you get your stuff through your wishes. But I've not spent any money. I have done some wishes in Genshin Impact. But to me, it's a... It's a, uh, what was I saying? It's an action RPG um, with a gacha mechanic attached for the monetization. And if you want all the different characters, I suppose I better show this now because fucking talking about it. All these different characters, I don't have them all. I don't have them, but I didn't spend any money and I've got loads. These ones the game gives you. I get, I don't know, it's rubbish. The game gives you these for free, guarantee. No messing. No and that really gives you that for free. Really no messing. And then I've been lucky, so to speak, and got one, two, three, five stars. And one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight additional characters. Myself, 
that's how I've done free to play for a couple of months. But if you want to wish for them, if you want to go and spend your money in this gacha system, it's here. It's a way of getting additional stuff, more characters, more stuff. But you don't need to do that at all to play the game. And if you never press the wish button and just went with the characters the game gives you, you'd still be able to play the game through. So it's an action RPG with a wish system attached. That's what it is. When you're in this game, when you're running around, when you're doing all this stuff, there's no gacha mechanic. Well, there are, there aren't there? The artifacts are kind of... Well, that's the same as World of Warcraft, isn't it? When things drop from a boss. Well, there's kind of a, an RNG mechanic, but there's no gacha mechanics here. I'm not, you know, I'm not rolling on stuff necessarily in and out Time to act. in the game, other than rewards from bosses insofar as I kill a boss and I hope I get the thing I want. And if it's not that good, I'll kill the boss again and hope I get the thing I want. You know, RNG drops on certain artifacts. But other than that, it's not... Look, it's Breath of the Wild. It's running around. It's uh, it's all this good stuff. It's exploration. It's fighting. It's leveling up. Um, gacha's not required for any of it. All of this is non-gacha. This bit is a gacha machine stuck on the side. So I will concede. Absolutely, I'll concede that... And I just closed all my windows instead of keeping the one I wanted. I will concede that this is stuck on the side if you want to get extra characters. But I find it difficult to describe Genshin Impact as a gacha game when it's so much more. That would be like calling other games... Like, if you had to name every game by its microtransaction... Or, sorry, by... If you had to name every game... Pri if you had to categorise every game primarily by its monetization aspects, then World of Warcraft would be a microtransactions game. Or a subscription game, maybe. No, it would be a microtransactions game, would it? I don't know what you'd call it. But you wouldn't be able to call it an MMO. In the same way as we're not calling Genshin Impact an AR... PG. We're calling it a gacha game. So it seems strange to me that you'd have to have... Like, can't it be both? I suppose it's both, isn't it? It's an ARPG with gacha monetization. But it seems strange that we would label it in just that one big stamp gacha. Because you get all sorts of different gacha games. Like, these are strict, real, original, all sorts of different gacha games, look. Let's get back to the video. Oh, the quality is bad again. I wonder why that keeps happening. You want what you love, right? Wait. Okay, this is a bit difficult for me because it is all in Japanese, I think. And we're talking about this guy who's playing it on his phone. He's become emotionally invested in the stories of the characters first. And that's how it's got lured in. They're saying you, you watch all this intro stuff and you really feel for the characters okay fair enough he's always playing the game on his phone if i'm awake i'm usually i mean i say fair enough i don't think that's a good idea to be wasting all your time and effort and energy on playing a game on your phone like that but you know it's not my life is it i think he's probably playing while he's driving too whoa you spent about 70k on the game how do you do that how do you not, like, how do you stay home and just play a game all the time and have 70k to burn? That's, I don't understand that. Pause. $70,000 on fake grand order. That's a lot of money. $70,000? Oh my god. You watched somebody else watch a video? Yeah, at the beginning he said he was going to play the video to, to look at it. This obviously isn't the majority of the video. So also, like, I'll say this before anyone else does. It's clear this guy's got a problem. He's not just playing a game, not just spending like a couple of dollars here and there. Not just, you know, he's got a problem, hasn't he? He's doing it all the time, every day. He's not doing anything else with his life. So he's obsessed with it. And he's spending an excessive amount of money, which I don't see how he's bringing that money in if he's always playing this game. So you'd say, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You'd say that was a problem. It could be a gambling addiction. It could be a... Uh, you could be spending all your money on chuffing, going to the zoo every day. If you're always spending your money on going to the zoo every day and everyone, like, you know, you couldn't stop feeding the penguins. People, <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. If people get obsessive about things, that could be considered a bit of a problem, couldn't it? Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's considered like commitment and drive and passion. But, you know, this clearly 
I don't care. It doesn't have to be fake Grand Order or any specific gacha. He's got a problem here, hasn't he, with what I perceive to be gambling mechanics. But but this is just something to illustrate the situation. Oh my God, that's a lot of fucking money. Wow. To be clear, one triple A game. Yeah. That took a studio hundreds of millions of dollars to make. I'll just give this guy the courtesy of moving my chat over to the other side because he made the original video, so. Just do that. <laughs> Feel a bit bad for him now. A man reacted to a man reacted to a man. Yeah. Do you know what? I do worry now already as we've got started in this. Maybe I should just watch the original video. But I'll try it like this first. I mean, I don't know. I'm not uh, that experienced. But I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll be honest. If I put hashtag Asmongold in the video title on Ganji Cuts, it's going to help, isn't it? It's going to help better than if no Asmongold. So. Cost $60. This person bought... <laughs> I don't know. What's 70000 divided by 60 It's a lot. <laughs> Basically 1,200 copies. I just want you yeah, guys to get- Yeah, his vote, like that's the thing, right? Is like his vote on what kind of game should we make matters 12,000, or sorry, 1,200 times more than yours does. You keep that in mind. A sense of- Got a couple of points there then. So, do, does, does it matter? It does to this particular kind of monetization, yeah. Is he really, but like, that doesn't matter to a studio who are not monetizing like this, does it? But uh, in this specific instance, then these people who make this game will be more concerned with this guy spending 70 grand than somebody spending $12. But also, what, this 12,000 copies of, 1,200 copies of Hitman, uh, or whatever it was, it's not the same, It's that's apples and oranges. Like, I've said this loads of times about Genshin Impact, which is that, you know, I'm not, I expect usually to pay 40 quid for a game to have, I keep holding up an actual game to prove it, <laughs> to have a game, I've still got that sealed, but to have an actual game in my hands and to uh, to play it and then when it's finished, I own it still and it's mine and all that. Yeah, yeah, but Genshin Impact's a four-year online service. It's not a, a, it's not the same thing. It's apples and oranges there and the money they're spending creating these online experiences, these new events, these further expansive maps, it surpasses what you can fit into a $40 cartridge. So, uh, apples and oranges there. It's a bit unfair of a comparison. They say Why vote with your- I'm finding myself defending the gacha game, defending Genshin Impact. Bear in mind, I went into this eyes open, prepared to rip it to pieces if it was predatory and disgusting. And thus far, I've spent no money and not felt really compelled to. Money? This might be interested That's in this kind of model. Okay? That's the beginning of this presentation. <laughs> I just want to make the character stronger. I paid five hundred dollars getting one character, but I wanted to be level five, so I ended up spending two thousand five hundred dollars. Of course. Oh my god. Nice. Does he have a job? Oh no. His parents don't know how much money he spent, and they think it's fine as long as he's having fun. Uh, I mean, it's all relative, isn't it? It depends how much money they've got, but I don't know. I don't know if it is fine. I don't know where he's getting the money from. That's an issue to me here. But in general, like, what's life about? You know, have some fun. It's okay, I think. But I don't think he necessarily... Like, fun and being addicted to some... Like, he might say, oh, well, you know, I'm enjoying my heroin, so like, as long as I'm having fun... <laughs> Right, well, like that, yeah, but if it's detrimental to your life, then maybe not necessarily that fun. Or there's a bigger question to ask. I don't know. They think it, they don't know how much money he spent. Like, I don't know why people. The thing is, if you want to spend your money doing that kind of stuff, you should be able to do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Like, I am actually okay well, with. Yes and no. Yes and no. I think we should have regulations. In, I mean, we already do have regulations in society, the, the good kind of governance to say, well, this is predatory and damaging and people are being manipulated psychologically here. So maybe we need to uh, put some rules in place to protect people from 
predatory psychological manipulation. And I would say that would should expand the like when I was a kid, I had adverts for cigarettes and uh, alcohol and plastic toys all pumped into my head before I even understood what was going on. And then they regulated, and now I can't have watched my. If I have kids now, they're not going to see any adverts for cigarettes. So things have changed. But I say we even need to go further than that with advertising. So it's not just gacha games. Like I think this is the whole world that we live in is corrupted by this horrific greed and psychological manipulation. This is just another example of it. And this particular person is an example of someone who's particularly susceptible and gone quite far down that road. Games being paid to win and having ridiculous amounts of money that you can spend to win. I just don't like the loot boxes. Like, and that's what the gotcha games are, is there are loot boxes. Parents don't know? Yeah. And I don't know if his parents need to know, depending on how old he is. It just, it's relative to who's spending what money in what place here. Okay. How do they not so know? So that is an intro video. Let's yeah, it's get his money. into it. This is gaming revenue visualized for oh the past 20 years. I love it. I love a, a sexy graph like that. Although this one's kind of confusing because of all the wobbly lines, but uh, really interesting. Yeah. Should we just, I'm just going to get this up if I can on my own and have a look at it. The rise of gaming revenue visualized. Images. Let's just have a big one. Large. Let's just let's just have a big one. Is that big enough? That's big enough, isn't it? That'll do. So I can move it around, can I? Okay, we'll start over here. We're talking about arcades. 1972, I wasn't alive. 1978, I wasn't alive. But arcades took the lion's share of money. And underneath it, the, the green line underneath is consoles. Now, I didn't really realise that in the 70s consoles were pushing. But I suppose I had an Atari when I was a kid that was like old, old. So I don't remember exactly when the Atari came out. Okay, the 80s, I'm alive. <laughs> The NES comes out in 1985. So console, look how consoles, how it shrinks, how the whole market shrinks in the 80s as well. In a way, doesn't it? In the 70s to 80s, it's a big market in the arcades and then it starts to shrink. PC arrives, this blue line on top is PC. And so the whole market shrinks and arcade maintains its dominance. This is when Nintendo come out in the middle of a time when console gaming is at its like weakest smallest part of the market but i suppose they grow that part of the market don't they look um i suppose they grow that part of the market so i've got an i've got a nes i've got a game boy i also love going to arcades when i can but my parents won't give me loads of money to spend on an arcade system machine and they don't want to stand in the arcades with me while i play it so I'd, that's that's how i rolled i was on the console all this now, Super NES, Game Boy, yeah, I understand that. PC is there, it exists, yeah. Handheld arrives with the Game Boy. Interesting, they put it as its own category there. Handheld arrives with the Game Boy. Uh, this all makes sense to me. This is fine. Then we're going to move across. We're saying Doom and the PC starting to take off. Doom games like that. I actually had a PC in our house. My mom, mom needed it for work and stuff, and I played a bit of Doom on that. Yep. The Sims 2000 there. So now we're into the modern world. The Nokia phone, mobile gaming. Uh, Tommy Palm, who created Candy Crush, who's in my documentary that I did. I did a documentary about gaming. If you want to watch it on our channel on YouTube, you go to Ganji Kid and you go to vid ah, videos and you search for indie like that and it's top one there indie game development paradise so in this i met tommy palm and asked him about, about a bit of stuff uh here he is this is tommy palm he created candy crush and he was telling me in that documentary that you can see on my channel that uh he started making games for phones at that time thinking it was going to take off and it took a while before it did and he had a, like a bit of a hard time uh working on it before it did so i can see here now what he means candy crush here in 2012 was his first game that took off but he was making games all the way through this and it, it was growing but look how it took off at the end here all the while where's that market share change? like the market's getting bigger like physically the market is growing it's, it's maintaining around this stage 
but in the final stages it actually explodes look so it's interesting that in the 90s and the early 2000s pc arcades consoles handhelds but we'll call them cons like that a game boy didn't you know a game boy counted but you know i still had a nes and a snes so that's the xbox the PlayStation, the Nintendo's of the world, they're all fighting for this market share and it's fairly stable the amount of market share that there is. And the people that lose is the arcade. People prefer to stay at home and play on their good machines that are better than arcades and change the games around than go in the arcade and spend money in the arcades. That's who loses. The arcade never really picks up again. It always it maintains a very small sliver of market share before really quite petering out in today's today's world but you know at least maintains some sort of i suppose there'll be novelty factor there'll be always an arcade machine at your local chippy or something i don't know um or on the ferry or somewhere but uh it arcade is the initially the industry giant and it's the one that dies out in favor of not pc really although pc maintains growth not consoles which go up and down in their market share, in their, like this, this console line is actually kind of wibbly wobbly, kind of wibbly wobbly. So it maintains a market, but it doesn't explode and grow. Handheld, again, not really, you know, we're talking about specifically handheld machines. They, they're slightly growing, but it's the mobile market that takes off in today's day and age, isn't it? Look, the mobile market is now bigger and is, contributed to this doubling in the entire market share entire market sorry it's doubled the entire market before mobile gaming you had a games market that's still there that is actually still there but fuck off your game boy fuck off your handhelds they've all gone because if you want a handheld you, you've got a mobile and not only did it eat not only did it eat handheld completely but it created its own sector like, there are people that mobile gaming has reached that weren't playing PCs, that weren't playing consoles, and have not decided to give up their console and give up their PC in favour of mobile. It's a different market. And it might be there's some overlapping there. It might be some people have got a PC and they mobile game. You know, it might be that. Or it might be that it's a different market entirely. It's probably some of both, isn't it? We can't tell from this graph. Really interestingly, right at the top, really interesting, is VR starting off as this little purple sliver, which has had a bit of a s squeeze of the toothpaste, but it started to s sliver off again. But as we've seen, things can sliver off and explode again, so uh, don't count out VR. But cloud gaming, just taking off there, cloud gaming. And whilst VR might be predicted as the thing of the future, and Tommy Palm, who created Candy Crush, once he sold his company, now creates VR games at his company, Resolution Games, which you can see in our indie game development documentary um but uh interestingly fortnite makes up a big you know chunk of this you don't necessarily think of fortnite as a mobile game but it's a free to play it's ported to mobile epics on mobile like candy crush but the cloud gaming might be the thing in the future everyone thinks vr might be the thing in the future but cloud gaming there right at the top who knows which part of this market might be stolen or expanded through cloud gaming Certainly mobile and cloud gaming could work hand in hand. It's a really interesting graph, that is. It's a really interesting look at how gaming has changed over the years. And notably, arcade suffered. It would do. You make sense. PC and console have not... The PC's market has started to grow, and that's based on the cost of the PC coming down. Um, I'll, sorry, Roger, I just missed your questions, but I'll, I'll answer them in just a second. Um, the PC market has started to grow, and that's because the cost of a PC is coming down, isn't it? Now, I wouldn't have been able to afford this box that I've got in the house here now, but I can now. You know what I'm saying? So that's going to make a difference. And consoles... I'm surprised to see between PlayStation and Xbox, Nintendo, Sony, all of them, that market has not managed to exp expand. I suppose once you've reached market saturation in the early 2000s of people who like consoles... <laughs> You get the new Xbox, you get the new PlayStation or whatever, but where are the new people liking consoles? And maybe some people grow out of it and maybe some people are born into it, but uh, the growth up market there is mobile. It's the big... And out of all of them, this is what's worth noting, final point, is the final tallies 
Uh, mobile's 85 billion, PC is 40 billion, and console's 33 billion. So mobile is worth more than PC and console put together. So if you're making games in today's day and age and you want to make money, then you're too late. You should be making mobile in the early 2000s. But now you want to start on cloud or VR. But in the early 2000s, if you'd been on mobile, you'd be rich like Charlie over here, Tommy Palm. <laughs> So uh, that's an interesting look at that. Let's see what they make of this graph. 50 years of gaming. Oh, no, wait, okay. let's let's react to my question. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Did you ever play Age of Empires or Red Alert? Or they're not really in your sphere? Absolutely, I've played. Um, so Red Alert. I mean, I should go in the other room and get... The problem I've got is that uh, I could go in the other room and get my game boxes. And I've definitely got a Red Alert somewhere in the other room like you know no longer functioning on my old xbox but um the problem i've got is that i, I was one of these people that had to sell them to the <laughs> i feel really bad about doing it now like about having done it and once my mate convinced me we were going to go and buy the new call of duty and he was like look if you sell all these games back to the, the GameStop, then you can get the free the new call of duty without paying for it and i was like yeah but you know these games i might as well keep them like, i've paid for them they're not going to give me loads of money i used to have bully and they gave me a good deal on bully and now it's like bullies worth loads of money. But uh, yeah, I don't still have all the old game boxes, but um, yeah, I absolutely played a bit of Red Alert, Command and Conquer. Yeah. I think I had the green one. I had a green one. So I don't know, it just in the back of my mind, it was green. Um, I loved strategy games. I was a, I'll talk you through my own video game history another day but uh, I was a NES SNES uh, game NES SNES N64 I didn't have a GameCube and then I had a PlayStation 2 at uni and then uh, I had a Mac for making music and working on so I, I did do some gaming on the Mac but I, I ended up buying an Xbox when I got into hairdressing again when I was on the way home and I had all that money in my pocket that one day uh, that would be Xbox One. No, it wouldn't have been Xbox 360. What am I talking about? Um, and then I had, like, since Xbox 360, I've probably had a, a, either an Xbox or a PlayStation kicking around. Um, and over the years, I've had access to PCs and other things in the houses as well, like my dad's house. And, uh, I've, you know, I've, I've got a wide and storied gaming history. Yeah, absolutely. And definitely, absolutely love. Um, is it this? Is it that, that I'm thinking of? Because it's got a green target on the front. Hasn't it? It was an Xbox One. It was an Xbox. And it was green. But anyway. Um, and Age of Empires. Let's have a look at that. I, I love those sort of games. I don't think I've played, again, I think Age of... Empires. I think that was a PC game and it would have been a bit more... Um, I might be wrong about this because I don't know. Age of Empires developed... Published, oh, it's Xbox. Xbox in 97. So I don't know if I had an Xbox in 97. I probably No, I didn't have the first generations of Xboxes. I started on Xbox 360. Before that, I was on uh, GameCube and... Like when Nintendo went up all weird and they did... Uh, the Wii and stuff like that. My sister got a Wii and a Wii U, but I didn't get a Wii. And, like, the way my life was, I wasn't... Like, I had a PlayStation 2, but... Yeah, that was that for me. And then now I've got a Switch and I've got an Xbox... And a, not a new PlayStation, but a PlayStation 3, I think it is. And a computer and all sorts. So I'm really lucky. Um, but I love, yeah, I love all those strategy games. I think they're brilliant. Loads of fun. The, the <laughs> This is going to probably not come up but maybe um is it warrior of rome on the on the sega you might call it a genesis but i call it a mega drive yeah it is my mate had a mega drive and we had warrior of rome and we used to sit and play it for hours i, I had to go around to his house to play it but I, we used to sit and play it for hours, and I fucking loved that game. Anything like that, you give me a hexagonal, you know, based strategic system, give me one of those, and I'm away. Give me that, and I'm, you know, give me hours, give me hours, and I'll do that for hours. Yeah, Warrior of Rome. 
Don't know if anyone remembers that. Let's have a little quick... I was supposed to be reacting to this other thing, so let's have a quick look at it, because it is a lovely bit of... Uh, Thank you very much, adverts. It's a lovely bit of nostalgia for me. This is. Sorry, Mighty Max. I'm not interested in your whatever, but I just want to see the game. It's a dancing man. <laughs> uh, I want to the music. The da, 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 da. Just don't lick the switch. There must be a way of me getting this and playing this on stream. I mean, it might not be that fun for you, but there must be a way of me getting this and playing it on stream because I fucking love this game. So anything like that, anything like that. It's hexagonal civilization. I did have a civilization on a PC that my mom got in the house, but um, I can't remember which age, you know, it was an older one. And uh, the game, I'll tell you the game though, which is, um, I've got to be able to remember the words now. It begins with the W. Um... Oh shit. West North West West North West North. This the Battle of West North. It's free. I'm not gonna be, oh, wait though, wait, wait, wait. I haven't looked at this for years. I haven't looked at this for years. But I like have played so many hours. I could I could have got because I could get it on the Mac. This was like my jam. I mean it looks different now, I suppose. It looks better now. But uh this is it. It's, it was hexagonal tiles, turn-based. You build up your armies. You you know recruit minions. You send them out, and if they win their fights, they get X XP. And if they get enough XP, they level up and become stronger units. So you decide who's fighting who based on that system. And it's got a, a whole load of different stories and um, PVE content. You know, it's like got a whole load of. Uh, quests not quests you know like story mode and lots of different people have put their like it's it's a i think it's free because it's a created by you know a group of people open source on the internet sort of thing i don't know exactly but look at it it's cool I'm looking at, see, I'm looking at this and I know exactly what this map is and what they're doing and I've done it about 20 times. <laughs> so that was my jam. That was my jam. Anything like that, yeah. I do, I like, I like Civilization. Anything, anything like, you know, like that, I absolutely adore. Um, city simulation, all that sort of stuff. Strategic, map based you know absolutely adore it but i don't know if it makes good streams but yeah i really love those sort of games this is going to take a really long time to react to this isn't it you might notice in the beginning all gaming revenue came from arcades and consoles yeah then we added the pc to the mix yeah in the late 80s then handheld comes along <laughs> and then right around game boy. 2000 okay right around the millennium they start to add mobile you might notice jesus mobile has look gone at the red a little bit of gaming revenue in 2007. Wait, he's moved himself over the other side. I moved my chat in respect of him being on that side of the screen, and now he's moved on the other side, you chuffer. To more than everything else combined today. Look mobile is now bigger red. than PC and console and cloud and... V What's insane I, to me about... Before Asm gets started, like, I've made my little commentary on that. I didn't feel like I needed to shout at you. I'm not being rude about Atrioc. And if you like Atrioc, you know, fair enough. I'm not being rude about your favourite streamer, but I find it a little bit like, ooh, like... Yeah, like, and the mobile fucking gaming is fucking like, he's like yelling at me. Is that what I'm like when I get on my cob about politics? <laughs> It is like this is so this is 2010. So mobile was already raking in big fucking money in 2010. Yeah, yeah, Dude, but Asman, 2010 to me is like yesterday. <laughs> Isn't it? 2010 is like modern times, even though it's not, is it? It's now 10 years ago, but to me, it's like yesterday. I thought it happened in like, I didn't realize it's been happening for so long. That's crazy. We are combined. How did they do that? How did mobile reach these fucking astronomical revenues so quickly? There's more people have My guess, my guess, if you can take a minute just to keep the saliva in your mouth while you shout at me, uh, my guess <laughs> is that they were able to reach a wider market because everyone's got a phone, haven't they? 
Like people who didn't play games before suddenly have got Snake on their phone. So like once you, I think, <laughs> excuse me, once you've been indoctrinated as well, it, there's like, um, how do I put this? You build up habits, not indoctrinated. That's a funny word to, to use here because it wasn't deliberate, but you build up habits. So you've got Snake on your phone and you play a bit of Snake every day on your phone. Then you get the new phone. You actually look for what the new game is. Oh, what's the color game? Oh, I've got a color game now. Oh, hello. And then you get another new phone and you've got a couple of games, but now you're on apps. I know you have to get them off the app store, but some of them are free. So you're getting the new free game on your phone because look what my phone can do now. I remember when uh, an iPhone, an iPad could have Grand Theft Auto on it. I've downloaded and bought Grand Theft Auto for like £12. Even not like Grand Theft Auto 2. Not Grand Theft not, not the newest one, like an old one. But because it was as good as a PlayStation, I was like, wow, that's amazing. I never played it on the phone because it was a right fucking nightmare to play on the phone. So I've wasted £12. I already bought that once the first time around on PlayStation. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I, I believe that, that process of you get used to playing a game on your phone and then it starts to cost money, but then so does everything, is the way they've done that. I don't, you know, it's access to a wider market, of course, and it's habit forming, because people are on their phones forming habits. We have a more effective way of parting consumers from their money. Yes. And we are starting to see that seep into all aspects of AAA gaming. We are seeing that. And that is why I would like to take the time today to sort of give you some defense. To let you un Defense. understand okay. some of the tricks that. What, what would you call it if you're in, even if you're American? What would you call it if you were going to spend from the government on armies and things like that, on rockets and armies? What kind of spending is that? Is it defense spending? Is that what they say in in the Senate? Right. We're going to talk about the defense budget. They don't do that. They say defense because that's the word. Marketers and game okay. designers use to separate you from your money. All right. Let's see. So. I chose one game in particular to kind of follow the story through. Which one? This applies to a be? lot of games, but I chose one in particular because I think it's one of the best at it. Genshin the oh, 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 don't you, right you, <laughs> right you, what are you saying about my Genshin Impact? <laughs> what are you saying about my waifus? What are you saying about Genshin Impact, mate? Hey, watch yourself. Careful now. Careful now, because I'm quite enjoying Genshin Impact myself. Quite enjoying it. Watch, watch, you, you, you mind your, you mind your tongue. Beautiful, gorgeous okay. world we see here. All right. Of Genshin yep. Impact. Yep. Is essentially. Why am I not surprised? A far more predatory casino. No, no, no. See, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this. You know Diablo, the recent Diablo. The recent Diablo is a fucking nightmare of, uh, of, of you know the new Diablo, what's it? What's it? Is it Immortal? The new one is an absolute nightmare of uh, monetization. I'm not going to go over it and over it here because it's some other conversation. But look, people have spent 100k on the game. It's absolutely a nightmare of monetization. You can't even do things if you don't spend money. Yeah, that is what he's got on here. That's a slot machine where you pull the handle and instead of the numbers going round and the the fruits, instead. You've got Diablo Immortal playing, and you open up your Rift thing at the end. That's what that is. Genshin Imp Impact's not that. Genshin Impact is an arcade machine with a stick and buttons and the game, and you're running around and doing all that. And then stuck on next to it is this, if you want to get a new character. That is wrong. That's categorically wrong. And I, I won't have it. It's, it's a bad analogy. Because I was thinking of doing this. I was going to do a Diablo Immortal video. I was going to make a, you know, a conversational video about it. Everyone else covered it. I didn't have to, but my thumbnail was going to be a slot machine with that on it in the, like, you pull the, the you see the picture, like, slot machine, my slot machine, I've done a song with the word slot machine in it, see these slot machines now, you see how they're like computers, so they've got computer screens, digital screens, I was going to get an image of a slot machine, and instead of that, I was going to put Diablo Immortal in it. Like that. That's what Diablo Immortal is. You put your money in, you play the game, and then you get your rewards based on the slot machine. Like, that's what it is. Genshin Impact is not that. You couldn't fit the game of Genshin Impact on there without a joystick and other buttons, could you? You couldn't do Genshin Impact without the joystick and the other buttons. So this is a false analogy. In fact, if you want to use that analogy, fine. 
Diablo Immortal fits that premise, fits that analogy. This doesn't quite fit. You need another machine with joystick and buttons and a game, and then this stuck on the side. I said it right at the start. Genshin Impact is not a gacha game. It's an ARPG with gacha mechanics as monetization. So I don't think this is a fair analogy. It's the first truly triple A gacha game. Yeah. Now, I'll well, it's more than that. I think you're confused there as well because AAA is an industry term because we've... I mean, AAA is silly, isn't it? AAA is silly. Where did AAA come from? We used to have double A, didn't we? Or single A. I don't know. Let's have a look. Because it is a silly term, but AAA is an industry term uh, used in the late 1990s. It was borrowed from the credit industry's bond ratings, representing the safest opportunity to meet financial goals. So if you're making a game in-house, you might call it AAA because you spend a lot of money on it. It's a guaranteed seller. It's a big top-line title. Um, you know, it, it, it's... I don't have to explain it any further than that, do I? But it's not a real classification. So I suppose you could say Genshin Impact is a AAA game because they're spending a lot of money on it. It's a top line type. But no, like in an industry where in the 90s you were selling physical copies on shelves and this AAA game would definitely cost $60. But maybe, you know, a lower budget, mid-range thing could cost $20, not guaranteed to make the money back, you know, whatever. That's where that sits. Genshin Impact can't even go on the shelf. It doesn't come in a box. It's four years of development. It's more money than anyone's ever spent on creating a computer game before all in one big heave like you know there's there's no you, again i think false comparison a lot of these gotcha mechanics we're going to talk about one. have been around in various forms across mobile for a long time genshin impact is not just on mobile it's a triple a game across consoles and pc again triple a game getting confused it's a multi-platform experience you know how we looked at this graph do you remember how we looked at this the rise of gaming and at the very top here, we've got cloud gaming, and it's just starting to take off. Cloud gaming is where you don't own... It's really interesting to me, cloud gaming. Uh, it's where you don't have to own the stuff, look. So, you can connect to the internet, and then the internet has got the games all the clever stuff, the big computer. I don't have to have a big computer anymore in my house. I connect to the internet. And then the internet sends me the game to my TV or mobile, doesn't it? So recently we had a game on the Switch that was PlayStation 5 generation. And I was like, how do they make it on the Switch? And what they did was I didn't own it at all. I logged on and played it. And then when I turned off, I, it had gone. And I, that's the future of gaming, isn't it? That surely is the future of gaming. Who's going to want to buy a great big expensive machine that can do all this stuff when the internet can do it and your phone can do it and your telly can do it with just a controller? Like, in the in the long run, people are going to want less and less to buy the, the thing themselves and more and more to access it on the internet. It's quite a natural progression, I think. That's what Genshin Impact is, isn't it? Yeah, you can do it on your computer. Yeah, you can do it on your PC or whatever, but it's this. If I'm not on the internet, I not play Genshin Impact. It live on internet. <laughs> Cloud gaming. So it does exist on this graph as well, doesn't it? They're saying it's mobile gaming in this in this big mobile, 85 billion mobile slot. But in 10 years' time, when this graph changes, where will Genshin Impact sit? Because it's not... You can play it on your PC, can't you? You can play it on your console. So it's not any of these three things, is it? Or it's all of these three things. Where you're getting confused... You're getting confused. And it takes all of these powerful psychological... Oh, dude, like, whenever... Do you know what? I hadn't watched this before. didn't know what I was going to say. Atrioch, Atrioc, he's not offending me. He's not making me think, what a dickhead. He seems all right and everything. But I just think he's a little bit confused in these points here that he's just made. And this is the content of the fucking thing, isn't it? You know, he's, like, telling a story through certain points. And I've shown you why that slot machine illustration is slightly wrong. There is a slot machine. It's Diablo Immortal. You put money in, you run the rift, at the, you effectively putting the handle, and then you watch it go round and round on the slot machine while you're running the rift, and then at the end it gives you a reward. Genshin Impact's got that stuck on the side, but the actual machine, you'd have to have a joystick and button, so that was confusing. And this confusion of where Genshin Impact sits in the market, whether it's a mobile game, a gacha game, whatever, Obviously, we've just determined that it exists on the cloud and everyone accesses it through different 
and yet he hasn't spotted it's a cloud game. Remember I tweeted about Genshin Impact. So I, I had like a test where I tweeted out. I remember this. Asman tw just tweeted the word Genshin Impact and saw what response was. And then he just tweeted the words Final Fantasy. And, so, and Genshin Impact got huge response. Genshin Impact, unbeknownst to us, unbeknownst to us, you know, normal people in the Western world, there's another world out there. There's a whole fucking world out there. <laughs> And Genshin Impact is popular across the board in the rest of it. So if you're in Brazil, you know what Genshin Impact is. If you're in Indonesia, you know what Genshin Impact is. If you're in the Philippines, if you're in India, you know what Genshin Impact is. But in the West, in England, in America, you, you know what Call of Duty is. You've maybe not heard again. You are starting to hear about it now. I'll tell you, you are starting to hear about it now. But, but yeah, Asman tested that water with his tweet. Just the words Genshin Impact. And then I tweeted out just the words... Final Fantasy 14, and then after that, World of Warcraft, and Genshin Impact got mo got the most likes by a mile. People fucking love this game. So why are you playing it? Strips like away all of like the annoying, spammy ad stuff and puts it in an actually fun to play, beautiful game. Imagine and the so game being so. It strips away. Or you've got to take these things. You know, got to listen to these. It strips away all the advertising stuff and puts it in a fun game. Yes and no. Obviously, the game is the advert for the characters. That's the way it works, isn't it? The whole game is a big advert for the characters in a way. But it's not like traditional advertising where you might get um, more crude. You know, I think the point stands what they were trying to say at the start. They're trying to get you emotionally invested with the story, emotionally invested with the characters. Now, is that, you know, you're going to get emotionally invested and you're going to want to roll the slot machine. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. So that's fucking awful, isn't it? That's gacha gaming. Awful gacha gaming. Instead of having adverts, like, that you understand that at least they're good old adverts that you understand. No, now you've taken it away. Now you're just in love with Amber. And now that you have to roll for Amber or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Now you're in love with, with Gene and you have to roll for Gene. Oh, they've got you on a, a different level. It's awful. Well, just hang on. What, what about if... Uh, and I don't watch these films or go to the, you know, but, uh, so I'm going to, um, I'll just put Marvel. What about Marvel merch? Let's just put that Marvel merch. What about watching a film or, you know, a TV program and it being a big advert for all this merchandise? What about watching a film and then creating a character who is going to be popular amongst the kids and everyone's going to like so they can sell lots of merchandise. Like, what about that? Isn't that the same fucking thing? Like, here you've got an actual cup. You've got an actual cup which will end up in a landfill one day. But in gacha games, you don't actually have a physical thing. There's no NFT or anything like that. You've just got, like, you know, your money spent and your enjoyment of what you've got in the game. Like, you've virtually got it. In the same way as you play World of Warcraft and you physically don't have anything on that, uh, you know, that's gaming for you. It's always been that way. You've never got anything, unless you've got the actual box in your hand and the thing on disc. Like, all of my achievements in my old Xbox have gone in the bin when the Xbox stopped working. You know what I'm saying? Like, I what have I still got these days? Does it matter? That's a different conversation. But let's not, you know, let's not tar... In, it, let's be fair about this. If we're going to say that uh, Genshin Impact is bad because they've sublimated the advertising... They've sublimated the advertising. They've, they've, you no longer can see the advertising. Instead, you're playing the advertising and you're enjoying the and you're part of the advertising. You're tweeting it yourself. You are the advertising. That's today's world of social media influencers, Marvel mu movies, and like McDonald's fucking lunchboxes. That that's it. That's what it is. We've sublimated that. You wear it on your t-shirts. I'm doing it now. <laughs> like you wear it on your t-shirts. We are advertising. Um, so. Okay, that's that's my point here. Let's see where they're going with it. It has removed all of the barriers that were stopping people before from getting sucked into these kind of worlds. Yeah. And that's why it's been phenomenally successful. It made a billion dollars, I think, in this past year. I need to make more than that. More than a billion dollars this is, this in like is, its first good. year of play. What now that's interesting. Mean, they didn't mention what I just said about supplementing advertising, so obviously missed that point. But making hundred making all that money. I don't know. I haven't seen all the figures against all the other games. I know Candy Crush made a fucking loads of money. And I've seen just seen that market where it's a big billions and billions of dollar market. So uh, we're talking about a game that is universally enjoyed across the board. Like there's not many games that are played in both China and America and Japan and uh, 
Brazil, um, you know, Indonesia, Philippines, like, name a country. There's not that many games that have got that reach. So who's competing with Genshin Impact? Yes, they make a lot of money. Yes, they make a lot of money, but in what space are they making it? Remember, we just saw that the mobile world, like, I mean, it seems like, wow, they're making loads of money. Is that necessarily a bad thing? But look, this graph, the mobile market grew. It didn't mean that the PC and console market shrunk. The mobile market grew. And I don't know where they're putting Genshin Impact in this. I don't know where it stands in this 2020 total. Maybe it just preempted Genshin Impact, this, this graph. But they might be making more money on top. They might be taking it from a mobile market. They might be factored in with the mobile market. But uh, it's when you compare to something that's making, like Grand Theft Auto um, on the PlayStation, Grand Theft Auto 5 on the PlayStation or something, or League of Legends, like imagine the universal appeal of Genshin Impact versus the narrow niche appeal of League of Legends. Like it's just, again, it's apples and oranges, isn't it? Fortnite, you maybe can compare because that's an online game that, you don't have to pay money. You know, it's free to play. It's big. It's almost internationally recognized. Glo universally, globally recognized. I don't know, though. Um, but yeah, you know, we're looking at that sort of world, aren't we? So um, it's hard to make a comparison there and say that's a lot of money or not a lot of money. It's obviously a lot of money. But when you're selling into all of these markets, when you've got this huge market appeal and saturation, is it a lot of money? Is it a lot of money compared to Disney or Marvel who are doing the same thing with their movies, merchandising, um, tie-ins with fast food? And do you know what I'm saying? Is it the same as that? You know, is it the same as that? But makes it a gotcha as you can. Yeah, it will, it will end up in a landfill. Um, he says he doesn't have a problem with the pay to win game, just the gambling. Um, that's true, that's what Asman was saying. This other guy, I don't know what, you know, he's making these points about these gacha games. So I'm just riffing on this Atriox points here as well. Um, Asma's got his perspective on the pay to win, specifically because of the World of Warcraft and the MMOs. And he's only playing Tower of Fantasy because it's in that genre and not playing Genshin because it's not. But uh, we discussed pay to win a lot separately, but this is slightly different. This is how they trick players into spending. So... Asman's against gambling, maybe, but is he against psychological manipulation of the youth? <laughs> I am. I am. I'm wearing a fucking marketing creation on my thing, but, you know, I love Nintendo. Is that okay for me to say that? You know, am I a big hypocrite? Did they give me a lot of special... Uh... <laughs> did they indoctrinate me or did they um, gift me with joy? You know, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, these these are things that are coming up for me. Cannot say I want that and just buy it. Everything yeah. you want. Makes it a gotcha as you cannot be in dollars this is, this in, is, like, its first good. year of play. What makes it a gotcha is you cannot say I want that and just buy it. Okay, what makes it a gotcha is you can't say I want it and just buy it. I disagree. I disagree. In World of Warcraft, there are games, like, for, for, for forever now, there's been things that you can't just walk up and buy. In all games that I've played over the years, there have been things that I couldn't just walk up and buy. In, uh, in certain games, it might be special character unlocks. It might be special weapons that you unlock. The Master Sword cannot be walked up and purchased in, in Zelda. So there's loads of stuff in games that you can't walk up and buy. There are uh, even, like, you might argue that skins in Fortnite, you know, you have to earn them by grinding it and then you get them through the battle pass. You don't just walk up and buy it, although you can buy a lot of the skins now. Um, so, I don't know. Like, that's not what makes it a gacha game. Again, I think slightly confused. This is the definition of gacha game. It's come from Japan. It's called Gachapon. And you put the money in, you twist the knob, and you get either what you hoped you'd get on the front big picture or one of these other things that's much, much lower down the list but much more probable to get it and it's very much like a gumball machine but it's got this slight difference which is that it's a gambling machine and that has been turned into a monetization practice within video games and some video games don't have anything else they just have this and then it's a, just a gacha game but others are video games with that as a monetization system so it would be like calling world of warcraft a subscription or a um, or a microtransaction game instead of a mmo Genshin Impact is an ARPG with a gacha monetization system if you want those characters. Everything yeah. you want is behind some sort of lottery system. 
everything he wants behind a lottery system. Uh, again, disagree. Things that I've got that I wanted in the game that I didn't have a lottery for include Noel, include Lisa, um, Amber, uh, uh, that debate club. I suppose it did come through wishing, didn't it, the debate club, but it, it wasn't like the good thing. Um, and they gave me the free wishes so that I could take part in the slot machine and get my ascribed pity-timed stuff. Like, Genshin Impact has ensured that I will get X amount of Primo gems if I play. And I, I'm getting free rolls on the gambling machine. And if you roll it enough times, you get your free stuff. So, like, you can walk up and pay for it if you consider the pity timer. So he's wrong again. You can't, you can't just walk up and pay for it. Well, you can. Name something in Genshin Impact. I can give you a cash value on how many times I will have to roll maximum before I get it. And that's the cost of it. And if I get it before, I'm lucky and it didn't cost as much. But if I go all the way to Pity Timer and get it, that's how much it costs. So people are confused, but you can walk up. I, you know, name the thing on the, whatever's on the banner right now. I can get it if I spend £2,000. That's the cost. You might get a special offer. You might get lucky. You know, you might roll a few times and just get it and lucky you. But if you don't and you run to pity, you don't go forever. There is an end and it's pity and that's the maximum cost. So maybe I, I appreciate what I'm sounding like here. It's like I'm defending gambling. I'm not. I'm not. I just think he's giving an incorrect definition of what's going on in Genshin Impact. And this is why I didn't want to play Genshin Impact in the first place. Stuff like this put me off it. I saw it as a slot machine. I'm never going to play Diablo because I know that is literally that. You pull the handle, Diablo runs and you get your reward slot machine. I'm never going to do that. But Genshin Impact is like different and it's a shame that I would have missed out because I missed out on, I could have been playing this a year ago and enjoying it a lot more. That adds excitement and additional length to the game. Let's show you some more examples of the money they make. Excitement and additional length. I don't know because I'm not at that stage in the game. I finished all the story quests, but I'm waiting for the new expansion, which is going to add excitement and additional length. And I've been given lots of events to compete in and take part in, which have given me lots of extra primos, which have added to the length and excitement. If anything, in my Genshin experience, I would say that I'm getting quite a lot of four-star characters reasonably quickly. I've been playing for a few months and I've got a few. And it's coming to the point where I'm getting duplicates. So those little you know, slots that I'm missing, those few ones, I'm going to find it harder to hit them on the lottery system, aren't I? But I will probably, I mean, I'm free to play, bear in mind, but by the end of the next expansion, I'll probably have like, you know, 75% of what's easy to get. And the other stuff will be these, you know, five stars that are a bit more elusive. Like there won't be that much for dragging it out for me it has to be in-game content to drag it out for me and lo and behold they've got a four-year plan so by the time i'm finished with one thing they've already released another thing it's not that you've released genshin impact and you want to keep people playing so you have to put a slot machines on the side and that stretches it out it's like you've never played the game if you think that because i cannot have time i haven't even got time to do the wishes on my streams because we've got so much content to get through <laughs> um it would really cost 2k to get the banner if you had the worst luck and pity time to everything. Uh, we might as well just for the sake of doing it now. I've done it before, but we might as well just for the sake of doing it now. Um, calculator. So 160 primos is one wish. And 90 wishes is pity timer. But you got a 50-50 and you could fail that. So 90 wishes... And I fail the pity timer. Like I fail it. I get I go all the way to pity and then I get the wrong five star. Not the five star on the banner, the other one, the 50-50. Oh. So then you get another 90 wishes. And it might be slightly under because as you approach that other 90, the chat the odds of you getting it actually increase. They put like a pity um gradient so that as you like let's say I've got to 70, it's no longer a 0 0.6 now. Now it's like a 2.0 or something because they want to increase the chance of you getting it as you get close to the end. But let's say I run all the way to the second pity. Let's double that. So that's how many wishes it costs. Yeah. Well, it's primos, isn't it? It's confusing. Divide it by the 160. Is 180. That's right. Okay. So in Genshin Impact, and I'll just turn the Firefox off. 
This is my wishing system. If I want to spend my primos on wishing, I've got to buy primos then. Let's go in the shop. Let's assume I'm not even getting any, you know, this is because I've been saving my primos and I've got 10,000, but I could have not, you know, ignore what the game gives you for free. This is on top of what the game gives you for free. I've got 10,000 for free. I've got a, a basically halfway to pity time in there, haven't I? I've got 90 wishes in the bank or so. But let's say I have to buy them. You can't buy them here with this. This is the Star Glitter Exchange. You want to purchase them with Prima Gems. And it's 160 for each wish. So Crystal Top Up. And now we're getting confusing. Yeah? So how much is 160? Like, it's confusing, isn't it? Let's take the top one. Let's say Big Spender. We're giving it the benefit of Big Spender because we're... Hang on. Leave. I don't want to pay for anything. No, thank you. We're giving it the benefit of assuming we're a big spender because we're spending the money on the wishes. We're not just going to go for the... Because it changes in value, I believe. But 89, 90, 90 pounds for 6480. Yeah? 90 pounds for 6480. So we go back to this. We've got... 6... Ninety pounds for six four eighty. I did one hundred and eighty times one sixty. That's how many primos we need. Let's divide it by the six four eight zero. Oh. So we need to spend ninety pounds four point four times. That's how many bundles we need to spend. That's how many six four eighties we get fit in the two eight eight zero. Oh. So it's confusing, but I need to spend £90 4.4 times to hit pity. So let's times that by £90. That's £400. That's to guarantee the character. C1. C none. C none. Yeah, C none. That's to guarantee the character. <laughs> if you're paying for the primos on the banner and you're a bit of a big spender and you're doing the top line spend and you're not getting the bonus. You're just doing six four eight zero for eighty nine ninety nine, then that's what that's what we're looking at. Um, how come I've gone out of this? And you've got that, yeah. So then, that's not it over. You want to see five because you're a big spender. So times that by five, and that's two grand. That's where my working out comes from. Like you know, people who actually spend on this game want to see fives, don't they? That's the top line. If you want to go out and buy the top line character, it costs you two grand on the banner. Along the way, you're going to get those other three, and you're probably going to get the other threes up as well. So you factor that in if you want for value, but um, that's the actual cost. You can walk up and buy it. It's on a pity timer. And I'm never, ever going to spend any money on it. So that's my approach. But if you want, you can go and spend money on a fucking Incredible Hulk doll if you want so you can spend money on all sorts of things um i don't agree with gambling i'm never going to promote gambling i don't think you should put your money into this and gamble it i think you should get the free primos and enjoy what you get watch my other videos for my breakdown on how gacha games work and what you should and shouldn't you know it's up to you though isn't it we're reacting to this these are five of the recent characters released in Genshin impact uh, it's essentially 400 quid gets you literally everything on the banner though by that point yeah by that point, you're going to, like, I don't know how guaranteed it is, but you're going to get all the other things, the other three characters. On this banner, it's these other three. Every time you fail that, every ten wishes, you get a guaranteed four star. Or it might be the five star, but it's a four star. And every time you do, yeah, you know, you, you, over the time, if you're going to do um, 180 wishes, you're probably going to get everything on the banner, yeah. Agreed. So... There's a bit of an advantage there, but you don't. the thing is, you don't have to do all that money that gets spent. I've saved up my primos and I got Klee, so I didn't spend any money. Like that's another, there's another issue, which is that you might be getting your primos through a battle pass, or you might be getting them through that Welkin Moon, and you might be getting a much, much better deal than that, and you might be not, you know, you might be saving it up over time and not just going in and spending money. But we do have to accept that it's set so that that's the cost. We have to accept that, don't we? He's moved himself onto the side of the screen again, so I've got to move chat again. If he moves again, he's going to have chat on his face forever. I just fed up with the chopper. And the amount of money they made in a single day. No, I really want to make this clear. I'm only having a bit of a joke. I'm sure if I met him, I'd enjoy his company and, you know, buy him a nice coffee and say what a nice chopper he was. So I'm not digging at him. I'm just <laughs> responding to the things he's saying in the manner I feel 
through the things I think. It's not personal. Rich, I have all of them. Is that right? 15 million for Song Lee, 9 million for Albedo, 14.8 million in Ghana. This is one day. What's going on here? This is the money they took. I'm assuming, yeah? That's the money they took. Play following the release of a new character in Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact and the amount of money they made in a single day. So it's 15 million, yeah? So we're talking a game that's played like all over the world. I, I don't know how... You, see, this is hard to work out, isn't it? Because it's a lot of money. It certainly is. But... It's a different premise from other games that I've ever experienced. It's not even like Candy Crush where everyone's playing it on their phone. Like this crosses all the boundaries of different consoles and PCs and phones. It crosses demographic ranges. Like, hello, I'm not like necessarily well, maybe I am the right demographic for this. I don't know, but like lots of people like anime. Lots of people like Japanese culture as well, so Chinese culture culture in general i mean it's, it's it's apples and oranges again isn't it so i find it hard to contextualize maybe a better way of looking at this would be to look at what films make marvel movies opening opening box office that's good it's tiny i can't you know why would you give me a tiny image tools size large like what was the point in having any tiny images that no one can read um opening weekend box office us and canada so again it's hard to judge isn't it um but we're talking 300 mil but that's us and canada it's not global so we're talking 300 mil so compared to a movie we're doing a bit better but we need global don't we global box office by domestic debut It's a bit more confusing for me because it says by domestic debut. Domestic would mean not global. But Black Panther here, domestic post debut gross, international total. International total, 1.4 billion, Black Panther. International total. I mean, a film doesn't go on and on, does it? You don't keep going back to the cinema to watch the film. But uh, So maybe, you know, we're looking at a different medium here. Because games and film and music, you know, the music industry was huge, wasn't it? The film industry was huge. The gaming industry is bigger than those industries now. It's bigger than those industries. So maybe we're looking at a different premise here. Maybe that's a better way to contextualize it. It's hard to contextualize it. Maybe I should be looking at what slot machines take on the opening nights in Vegas or something. You know, it's hard to contextualize it. I understand that. Engine impact and the amount of money they made in a single day. Rich, I have all of them. Is that right? 15 million for Song Lee. Uh, if that's Rich Campbell in chat saying that he's got all of these characters, then, you know, very jealous. <laughs> 9 million for Albedo. 14.8 million in Ghana. This is one day. Okay? Adding up to billions. So now let, let me get into some of... I think the biggest shock here is the biggest breadwinner is the guy. Bro, I thought the girl in the middle would be like fucking 35 million. Again, it's not what people think, is it? It's not a waifu simulator. It's an ARPG with all this other stuff. Like, I dissed Zongli earlier for having a brown coat and not being very, like, interesting and fun. He likes to sit around and do contracts. <laughs> But maybe he's a really effective character. And when he came out in December 2020, you know, wowed the audience. And it also reflects how the game is pumping at the time. How much... This is, this is, this is bizarre, I'm bringing these other facts in. That I, you know, if the game's really hot at the time, more people are in there spending more money. It might tail off by the time Albedo comes. But there may be more people come in by the time Ganyu comes. And it's another influx of new people. And, you know, so you've got that. Because it's a longer time that we're talking about, aren't we? We're talking about years here. We're over, of course, of two years or one year. December the 1st, 20, 2020 to March the 2nd, 2021. So, um, but we're talking time. And then also we're talking about economics and we're talking about COVID. You know, people staying at home and spending more money on computer games. How do those things factor in? And how do recessions factor in? And we're talking about global economics because it's a global game. So I don't know what the Brazilian economic 
situation was in December of 2020. And also in December, more people are spending money on Christmas for other people. So albeit I didn't get as many shouts, but in January, they've got their Christmas money in from their nan so they can spend it on Ganyu. <laughs> And this one's got to be at least 25. He was OP? Well, I, I thought what like, people play this game for, like, the game? A meta and OP. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I would have... I would have picked the one in the middle. The, uh, <laughs> He's wrong. He's wrong. We're picking the one on the end. The one psychological the tricks too? that they use, okay? Actually, that's a good point. Like, that's one of the things. Like, I remember I said this in the last video where I talked about Genshin Impact is, uh... Uh, a lot of girls play Genshin Impact, where it's like, I mean, how- Good point, and I missed the last video, so maybe we've got to go back and react to that, but uh, very good point. It crosses, but I said that earlier about demographics. Maybe I suggested that I wasn't the target market, but I don't think, again, with films, like, it was more clear that Black Panther had a target market, maybe. I've lost that graphic now, so don't worry about that graphic. Um, but films are a bit more broad, aren't they? So maybe we're looking at this in a different way now. How many girls do you think are playing uh, Escape from Tarkov, right? Like, there are some. I know some, actually. However, the majority... I'm just going to skirt around his sexist attitude <laughs> uh, towards some games. And, I mean, he's not completely wrong and he's not completely sexist, but um, I'm a total believer that sometimes you might say, oh, how many, people how many girls are doing this? And is it reflective of girls don't like doing it? Or is it more reflective of a culture that's not so welcoming to young girls and is not the sort of culture that many parents might want their young girls to be um, around? I mean, uh, and maybe an American, I used I use a, uh, an analogy of pool, like, because in England, if you want to play a game of pool or snooker you have to go to like the men's club where all the boys are playing pool um and there's a bar and it's usually like a pub but uh maybe in america it might be more like bowling and bowling might have changed and become less sexist over the years but you know like male dominated environments that are male dominated uh create an impediment for female participation and when you remove those impediments uh for example online like maybe that starts to change and you might say well online is you know tarkov's online but uh the communities around certain games the communities around certain styles of games and genre of game like you, you know it's accepted that call of duty is a bit of a boys club isn't it so anything like that might get seen in that way and uh, we're talking about marketing on top of that so why would you want to push tarkov to girls when it's not your target market so then you start fashioning the game to make it more appropriate for your target market and then you've got all these other issues on top so I think Genshin's really good for that. It's really, apart from the diversity in the cast, there's not enough skin tone diversity for my liking. Uh, and probably body shape diversity as well. Apart from that, it's good at appealing to a wide range of people, isn't it? I'm just going to grab the chocolate milk that I was promised. Chocolate soy milk. Just one sec. Soya milk. Oosh. I'm in luck today. Not sponsored or anything, but if anyone that makes soya milk or oat milk or anyone would really like to sponsor my stream, then I'll just take payment in this. <laughs> Non-branded. Any brand will do chocolate soya milk, please. Thank you. Just give me that. Pour it on me on my in my funeral. My, I just only serve this at my funeral. Don't don't let anyone have an alcoholic drink. Ha. Do what you like. Oh, I spilled a little bit. No, 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 no. That's gone on the mouse mat thing now. Oh, God. I'm making a mess immediately. Why'd you get me a big mouse mat that's so big it covers the whole table? Because now I get stuff all over it. And I've got it on my face. <laughs> all right, just getting distracted by soy milk. Anyway, let's crack on playing that game are guys uh, same probably yeah there's like three 
And um, same with Path of Exile. I'm sure there are girls that play the game. DS Louis plays the game. Uh, I've seen, I think Annie Fuchsia has played the game before. And a handful of other people too, of course. But it's mostly fucking guys. And I think Genshin Impact is unique in the fact that it actually attracted a large female audience. There's a lot of girls that play Genshin Impact. That I want you to be ready for. I don't think it's completely unique. I'll agree with what he's saying. I don't think it's completely unique. I've got a sister, and she played all the games I used to play. All of them. The ones that she loved most were things like Ocarina of Time. Uh, she currently plays a lot of Fortnite. But uh, she wasn't really into FPS games, Call of Duty and stuff. Not because of the actual mechanics of the game, because she's recently started playing them and she says she enjoys them. But because of this male-dominated environment and attitude and, you know, 14-year-olds swearing at each other in lobbies and, you know, what Call of Duty used to be perceived as, I think. We'd have to get her on to talk about it, but I certainly know that Ocarina of Time, Breath of the Wild, the Zelda series, the Wii itself, like, you're, you're confused again if you think that uh, Genshin Impact is a, in a unique place in the video game market. Because what Nintendo it deliberately did... I mean, Asmund's not confused. I'm sure he'll understand what I'm saying here and will agree. I'm just looking around for some stuff that I'm trying to find on my desk. And I can't find anything that I need on my desk. Where is all my stuff? Right, I'll just be back in one minute. How did I not have all my stuff? Just one second. Yeah, so the Wii was designed and it, like, it put me, I remember this, I came back from uni, my mate had a GameCube and I loved the GameCube, I didn't have one myself but I thought finally, like, how do I explain this, like the N64 was a massive step up from the SNES, it was 3D gaming, Ocarina of Time was a huge breakthrough moment uh, the things that we'd always dreamed of doing in three dimensions we now could do Mario you know everyone knows what I'm talking about that 3d Mario might not be the best Mario it might not have been the most perfect in lots of different ways you know, there's lots of glitches that they exploit on the speedruns now aren't there but being able to run around in 3d in Mario like that in the way they did it oh oh you know polygons and all don't care brilliant so it's a big step and then I didn't perceive the GameCube as being such a big step, but it was like in terms of like graphical fidelity. And yeah, it was kind of a big step. I didn't couldn't appreciate it myself because I didn't have one. Uh, and then there was lots of competing machines, weren't there at that time? There were PlayStations around, Xboxes. So it wasn't like when Nintendo created the N64, it stood on a pedestal on its own in a way, didn't it? Like, the market was, we looked at these markets recently, didn't we, just now. Um, the market had changed by the time we, we had the GameCube. And then, so Nintendo went in this really weird direction. I should, I should focus on what I'm trying to do. Let me just roll my cigarette and then I'll focus on what I'm trying to do. Nintendo went in a really weird direction for me, for my perception. But for them, it was about, we just looked at those markets. It's all about markets, isn't it? Nintendo wanted to reach a different audience. I think they called it Blue Sky Thinking or something like that, or Blue Sea Marketing, where there were people that had never played a game before, that like a Nintendo system, wouldn't consider playing a Mario game or anything like that. But actually, we're humans and they enjoy games. So can we create something that they can all enjoy? And that was the Wii, wasn't it? The interactive, everyone can do it, controller stick the your nan's bowling in the lounge your granddad's having a go on the the you know the sword fighting game or the boxing game and you know every age range women as well women can do this as well <laughs> it was advertised in a much more universal uh sense more like a, a modern appliance like an alexa rather than a gaming console wasn't it and that's why 
that's why a large market of the more traditional, um, what you might have called the target market or the core audience, when placed, they're already on the way to PlayStation anyway. Young boys had already been allured, lured by that uh, 18 plus gaming experience of the PlayStation. We're not trying to pander to little kids here on PlayStation. Oh, we're Raw and we're Grand Theft Auto and we're killing people and we're prostitutes. Anyway, look, so the markets, the demographics have been shifting. So to think that Genshin Impact was unique because it appealed to girls where no other games had done before, silly. Because that's the whole point of the Wii U. That's what it did. And then following that, it's not the Wii U, sorry, the Wii. Following that, the next generation of conversation, we had Gamergate then, didn't we? Because suddenly you had this larger influx of female gamers and they weren't going to stand for some of the uh, standard practices of a male-dominated and maybe computer gaming development had been male-dominated and maybe it was a sort of pre-pubescent pubescent testosterone like Duke Nukem vibe that had to be grown out of. In fact, uh, again, on my indie development game documentary here, a really interesting person called Lucy, she's in this game documentary, and she talks about exactly that, that I was talking about, about how gaming has grown out of this prepubescent stage, and now you can say a lot more with games. I think that's what she says. Um, and she worked for Ubisoft, so she knows what she's talking about. So... Uh, you can watch that on my channel there, Indie Game Development Paradise, Ganji Kid. So yeah, I, I disagree with this. I, I agree with the principle, Genshin Impact appeals to get to all gamers, female, male, old, young, whatever. It appeals to a lot of people who like anime culture as well. And I think it appeals to internet culture. And I think, like I said before, it's global and it's an online service. It's different from other games, so it's hard to compare it to these other things. But I think it's reached a lot more people for those reasons, yes. Number one, a bonus for first time sign up. Right, so now we're finally in and it's taken we're eight minutes and I've an hour and 35. So this is going to take a long time for me to react to this. I don't think I'm going to react to the whole video in one, am I? But we're at eight minutes and we're finally into the first. So maybe I, I say, uh, you know, that's been the intro. And, and like for us, we'll carry on on stream for a bit longer. But for my edits, I'm going to put a like edit this, Scott, edit this. Woo, in the edit. Can you see me in the edit? Edit this and just have that as episode one. And then the next one can be episode two. So, hi, you're with Scott. I'm Ganji Kid. It's midnight. It's always midnight. This is your right ear around your left ear. We're carrying on with our react to how Gacha Games trick players into spending thousands. Reacted to by Asmund Gold from Atrioc. Reacted to again by me. And we're into the tactics now. These are the actual tactics they use to psychologically manipulate you. And these are bad things that I don't like. Tactics to psychologically manipulate people bad things I don't like. I will quickly, before we get into them, we were looking at that before, I will quickly look at, I uh, just wanted to, no, oh, I fucked up. Spelling, Marvel, merch. See, I fucked up the edit now already. I should have had this ready. Uh, I do quickly want to say, I don't need to say, I do quickly want to say, I'll edit all that out because I'm saying it so you don't need to, preface it with anything you can get a load of merchandise these days from a lot of things can't you films are just basically adverts they used to be in clever comics that said things about society and now they're adverts for merchandise <laughs> so it's not just games that are doing this is it using psychological it's not just games that are using psychological manipulation to try and get you to buy stuff so What's you're that? gonna see this a fucking lot this is when you first get into the game they will give you some kind of bonus, some kind of double gem. I mean, that's pretty good deal, to be honest. Like, it, oh, oh you, like you you buy one and you get this. It's like you buy one get one free. It's like the uh, it, it's not even an eight hundred percent value, guys. It's so when I used to do hairdressing, I used to say free consultations, and everyone off the street could just come in and sit down in our chair and have a free consultation. Free? Oh, you're not charging for that? Of course I'm not, because that's my way of getting you to come into the hairdressing salon. And once you're through the door and you're sat in the chair, and we've discussed what kind of haircut you want, maybe you'll sign up to have it done at my salon. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like a, it's not a marketing trick, but it's a process of offering something for free to get people in through the door so it's not a new thing excuse me i've got a tickle in my nose and i'm not, not happy with it so 
to listen to me blowing my nose and snuffling about. So, I think I've got chocolate milk in my moustache as well now. <laughs> the things, you know, what I did like now, timestamps in the notepad. So, yeah, that's a good point, timestamps. Um, I see it, I'm watching it on the timeline and I can see, like, the main things that I would be able to, if I really wanted to make a, a standout moment, there's two things. On the sound, I can do a clap and it'll make a little peak. And I see that on the line. Or the other thing is, uh, if I changed the picture for some, like if I changed it to a red screen and then went back, I'd see that on the timeline. Be like, whoa, that's that red screen there. But um, yeah, I should make notes. I, what I tend to do is watch it all through at double speed and just edit out things that are rubbish. Edit, get, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. And then what's left should be the good stuff, yeah? <laughs> that's my editing process for this sort of stuff. Um, but I do have to listen to it all, and I don't want to put something up on the internet that I've not checked, so I do listen to all the things I say. I don't just say, oh, there's me for 20 minutes talking about that. Okay, that's fine. I listen to it through at double speed, so you have to put up with it. I have to put up with it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and also, I don't think this is, you know, in terms of psychological tricks to make you spend, this isn't one of the worst ones. This is just everything in the world does this, doesn't it? Special offer for signing up, first month free. You know what I mean? Like That's why you've got a gym membership that you still pay for that you never go to. So this is not new and it's not special clever predatory. It's just the standard predatory that we accept in our society. Standard predatory manipulation that we accept. I'm against it. I'm against this. I'm against marketing and advertising in general. I'm against teaching people at universities to do marketing and advertising without forcing them to do some sort of ethical uh, module as well. I mean, maybe they do do ethics, maybe they do cover it, but maybe it's thrown by the wayside when it comes to making money. Uh, I'm not a big fan of all that, no. And you've heard me witter on already about how films can be used as marketing tools. Not just Coca-Cola placed in the, you know, I've said it now, Coca-Cola and marketing. Not just that it's placed in the film, but you know, the whole film is basically a marketing tool for merchandise, isn't it? All the cartoons I used to watch when I was a kid, He-Man didn't exist. Like, they created characters, figures that you could buy, little, they created toys, Transformers, they created toys, and they said, how do we sell these toys? And then they created an advert, which was on the telly for the toys, and they said, you can't just put these adverts on all the time for kids, they're indoctrinating them with these toy adverts, I said, fine. And instead, they made a half-hour television show called Transformers and He-Man was a half hour animation and that's to sell the, the toys and the exact words of the man who did that was that we trained a generation of children to think there's got to be toys, there's got to be merchandise they trained a generation of children to think there's got to be toys, there's got to be merchandise so that's already been done that's why that guy sat there in his game room with all that stuff behind him that he's bought from like, you know and Asmund's not but <laughs> no, that's been, that's been done that's been done it's only a 100% value or a 200% value. Welcome to the, the shops. The reason they do this is because once you've put in payment information, the friction for everything else that they're going to try, try... Oh, that, to yeah, that's not just here again. That's everywhere. Once you've started the process of payment and you've typed in all those details, it's, that's the same with Amazon. That's the same with eBay. That's uh, Welcome to the internet shops. Tricky with is drastically reduced. Yeah, it's like if somebody ever tells you that they're going to give you something for free, all you have to do is sign up with your credit card, it's not going to be free. Because, like, like, for example, it gets free for the first 30 days. And then after the first 30 days, if you don't take your card off, they charge it. See what I said? That's why you still got that gym membership. So guess what happens? Most people forget about it. So they charge it. That's how it works. Yep. Welcome to the show. Like, oh, I want that skin. True. Having to go to your wallet and pull out the fucking credit card and type it in and figure that out is a stop moment. I know. It's, Psychologically, it's like it's a stop moment. It's a big pit of friction. They have I, to I'll be honest. I probably would have spent more money in Tower of Fantasy if I didn't have to put in my credit card information every single time. I, I would have. It's just fucking annoying having to do that. Cause that's like type it in, fucking authenticate it. Like, ah, oh my God. Like I could have spent another hundred dollars by now, but I'm not using PayPal. Spending <laughs> twice as long, spending the first hundred dollars. Now I don't want to do it again. It's taking too long. Heard of that? Okay. The first spend is the hardest. And yeah, I is. saw a video. Well, the first spend's the hard. It's the hardest for you to 
you know, reason out in your head that you're going to do it, but they make it the easiest, don't they? Because it's the best value, the cheapest, you know, bumper pack, starter pack. They make it the easiest. They, but, they lube you up. <laughs> a game like developer drugs. describing it as like an icebreaker. And they said, Yeah, icebreaker. Only... What he's talking about here, when he says he's talking about a game developer, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that he's talking about game de um, game developers conference. Where's he going to be talking to a game developer to hear exactly the same terminology as I do? Um, game developers con for conference. Um, the GDC has been a resource of awesome online content for years now and they have a game developers conference annually biannually and they do these talks and then the people that do the talks um the, the talks are online look interactive wind and vegetation in god of war so this is a fairly recent one it's a gdc talk Object a bit like a ted talk look we have three categories of these we have leaf parameters which control model shaping and posing so you get the gist they invite speakers from the games industry and they put the talks on the internet. There are a number of channels who use this as a resource to make their content. And they don't say, oh, I've been watching GDC videos and this is what the game developers said. They say, oh, I heard from a game developer. <laughs> Like that chap just did. But I guarantee it's come from this because they did a big one about whaling that a lot of people reacted to. Um, if we just search whaling. Don't call them whales. Uh, didn't they? Look, there's Genshin Impact creating an anime, anime style open world. We'll watch that one of these days. We will definitely watch that. That looks awesome. That'll be a game developer from Genshin Impact talking about how they've created the game. So that'll be awesome. Um, put that on my watch list. But they talk about how to, you know, um, there's a very famous GDC talk where they talk about how to attract whales to your game. And so I believe that he's talking about that exact talk. Think of themselves as spenders. So the icebreaker concept was brought up in that talk, which is that, um, why is it, hang on. Game Developers Conference, GDC, Wales, Whaling. Let's go whaling. It's this. I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's a different react, but it's... Paying guys, the whales, um, and the very best way to get these guys to spend is to get two rich competitive guys to fight each other and tell them I'll give you a slight upside if you pay me. Next off, to remind you that the best way to make sure of both your retention and your monetization is to make sure you have enough of an in-game economy in there. So it's just tips, tips, tips. He's put it all together. The monetization of how to create these games. Hot state, look, the psychology. They know the psychology. That's why they've done it. Games like Clash of Clans. Uh, Gatchas, look, are discussed here. So it's all in this video. And I would guarantee, I would almost guarantee that this guy, Atrioc, has watched that video and is now, like, I will be annoyed, actually. I'll be angry if all of his points have come from this. Because he should have just said, I've watched this GDC video, it's really good, why don't we react to it? Or, here it is, here's the points they make, why don't you go and watch it? Instead of making his own video, it's like, you know, regurgitate that content as if it's his own thoughts. But Once they've broken the ice, yeah. once you Maybe break he's not that doing wall, that. you... I'm not saying he's doing that. I'm not saying he's doing that, I'm just saying with that first point there, breaking the ice, I'm sure that was in a GDC. I'm sure I've heard it in a GDC. That's all I'm saying. Break them. That is a quote. <laughs> Once you break that wall, you break them. <laughs> that's that's right. Because you, you, you get them to do what you want them to do. I think that makes sense. There's a huge need for honest discussion ethical creation of game. No, bro, there's no, there's no discussion about the ethical creation of games. Don't you understand? Like, is there... You understand, like, in the Quran, gambling is banned. Yeah. This is something Muhammad figured out thousands of years ago. Peace be upon him. We've had the ethical discussion. Everybody knows about this. But this isn't necessarily gambling, is it? Well, it is, isn't it? You put your money in, you cross your fingers. So is, are we allowing kids to have...
can, what about your Happy Meal? What kind of toy do you get in your Happy Meal? Is that guaranteed? It wasn't when I was a kid. That was a gamble. So, you know, it's all on a spectrum. Absolutely would agree. Gambling, no. I don't pay any money into Genshin Impact. I will never pay money into Genshin Impact. I will never, I'm not going to go and put a bet on the horses or the boxing or anything. I'm not a gambler. Same reason as he's just quoted there. It's prohibited in the Quran. I'm quite happy to go with that as a, as a you know, like you said, they had it figured out back then. It's served me well. Right? Um, for you, if it's not illegal, go ahead and do as much of it as possible until they make it illegal. Um, possibly. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, it's not illegal. To, I suppose it is illegal to stab yourself in the legs, isn't it? I bet mean, there's a lot of things that aren't illegal that are detrimental to you. That's probably not a good idea. And they don't make it illegal, but they just try their hardest to prevent you from, like, um, smoking is not illegal, but it will be one day. But, you know, I do it. It's a fucker. It's a fuck up. You know, I shouldn't have got addicted to that. Um, another good example would be fast food, which is not illegal, but you don't want to, you know, make yourself into a big fat chuffer just to prove something, do you? Uh, there's all sorts of things that are dangerous and they're selling it based on the premise that they've got an advantage in the competitive market, which is that you can get addicted to it. So like, uh, like fast food plays on your desires as a human being for fats and sugars and overloads. And you think it's brilliant in your, your, your brain, not your thinking brain, but your, you know, automatic response brain. There's loads of fats and sugars there. That's good for me. It's a ready source of fats and sugars. I like that. You used to have to go hunting and gathering for that. Hunting mushrooms and gathering old bits of meat off the lions that run away. Ugh, ugh, horrible, leave that. Let's just eat the mushrooms and the, the fruits. Anyway, I used to have to do an awful lot of effort for that. These days, no. McDonald's, one dollar. Right? So they know what they're doing and they push it right to the limit until they get regulated. Sugars in soft drinks. Do you know what I mean? They just push it right to the limit so they get regulated. Smoking should be legal as long as you're doing it, whatever you want. I mean, it's a strange one, isn't it? I don't know what the correct answer is here. I do know that when smoking first came out, the doctors used to prescribe it in the same way as they currently prescribe Oxycontin or something. They used to prescribe it for respiratory illness anyway. They didn't know it was killing people. And when they found out it was killing people, they carried on because the can cancer-causing tobacco companies didn't want to stop prescribing. You know, it, it goes a long way back, but... Uh, I was watching Marlboro adverts on the Formula One when I was a kid. They've changed that. You know, so legalities are ifs and buts and changing and whatever. I, I do think we should have an open society. People should make good decisions. But I also think we should have a lot more clear signalling about what is good and not. And is un, it should be understood more, which is what we're trying to do here. So that's good as well, I suppose. Uh, ethical discussions you see I'm, I'm an ethical person i believe in good ethics and i believe in promoting good ethics and i don't mind i'm a punk and a rule breaker and a risk taker but i don't mind breaking rules that i think are not for my benefit that are for the benefit of the government or, or whoever but i do think that we should have you know things in place to protect people and it's it is a difficult gray area it is a difficult gray area um all drugs should be legal. I do think that. I think all drugs should be legal. But the mechanism, just saying that doesn't mean I think that anyone should just be able to sell them out of an ice cream van. Like, I don't think that. So uh, I do think that, I think decriminalising is a better way of dealing with things. And if instead of getting your heroin from a street dealer or instead of getting your crack cocaine from a street dealer, you were going to a clinic that was legitimately licensed to sell you this as long as you consumed it on the premises and had access to different kinds of programs for your own rehabilitation like then that would be the way to go wouldn't it uh, or another way to do it would just put it out in the woods and then all the the all the junkies go and live in the woods and then we don't we can clean up the streets <laughs> but um selling is in, selling is influencing people which is not the point uh <sighs> I, you know, the knowing that, I mean, drugs are a good example, aren't they? Because they're definitely detrimental. People really enjoy them. But uh, giving free samples of drugs to kids, or you know, having promotional events for heroin outside primary schools, who's the bad person there? The drugs, that, guns don't kill people. Rappers do. Yeah, it, the drugs are inert. They're just an item, but it's the way they're promoted and sold, isn't it? That 
is evil. Isn't it the actual sale of them? Is the like some people say it's not me that I'm just tr doing the transaction, but isn't it you that's handing over the drugs that's evil? If you're taking the money and you're keeping the money and you're dealing the damage for the money, so who are doing who's doing the influencing? People who take the money. Now, like, if you don't directly sell the drugs, but you have a, you like have a sponsorship from Drugs Co. Uh, if you are an influencer on social media and you know you don't give a fuck about the people who live in. Uh, countries like sweatshops so you do an advert for this or you don't care about animals so you do an advert for a makeup brand that tests on animals or you know you, you, if you don't give a fuck and you just do that and you take the money and you promote the sale uh, you're not complicit I mean uh, you can make the same argument with food that's not checked properly yeah definitely yeah yeah agree now, you know food standards is another great example like you would not allow children. Like certainly, I think you always want to think of children as well, because there are certain members of society that you need to protect that can't make good decisions for themselves, and they just take it for granted that what the adults offer them is, you know, wholesome and, and decent and good for them. So you know, if children are going to go to a shop and buy food and it's not going to be good for them and it might kill them, like not check properly, then fuck yeah, like we need to sort that out, don't we? People should be. Rep Imagine if a child ate. Um, a hamburger or not hamburger, a vegan burger that had a needle in it or a glass, then who's to fault? Like the person that sold the burger? Yes, yes, in some ways, yes. <laughs> uh, the person that cooked it? Yes, in some ways, yes. The person that supplied it? Yes, also. All of them complicit in the whole process and should take burden some responsibility. That's why we have uh, um, some kind of um, rules and, you know, food hygiene standards. Your kitchen gets inspected. Yes. Because otherwise you kill people. And this is different. You might not directly kill people, but why do we not, like, why are we allowed? And we, we're not allowed. You don't, you used to, this, the, you need to be to see these documentaries. I keep going on about it, but it keeps getting me copyright strikes. But there's these documentaries called The Men Who Made Us Spend. So in your own time, go and put The Men Who Made Us Spend into Google Look and watch these these episodes, because they actually talk about these things that I'm talking about. Um, they deliberately target children because children are easier to manipulate. And if you can make certain links in their brain at an early enough stage, then you've won the battle. You know, you don't have to worry about things later on. And one of the links they make is they have... Um, they example Peppa Pig and they have Peppa Pig Industries and what they have is this lab and it looks nice and the kids are playing and they're watching the Peppa Pig and they've got an app on the, the thing and, and behind a, a two-way mirror they're making notes and recording what the kids are doing and the lady says what we're trying to do here is if a child says I like Peppa Pig then they might buy one of the Peppa Pig products but if we can get them early enough between the ages of one and two then they don't say I'm li I like Peppa Pig they begin to say I'm like Peppa Pig or Peppa Pig is like me and they confuse Peppa Pig's identity with their own so if then Peppa Pig likes cheeseburgers they might also believe they like cheeseburgers having never had a cheeseburger because they have this uh, deep psychological Connect, like being made during their ever like during their um developmental progress it's been made during that that connection the people who make the cartoon have done it deliberately to make that connection so if you sit your child in front of peppa pig you're like fucking up their brain in favor of them spending money when they're older on certain stuff and i don't know which product will have the peppa pig jingle attached to it in the future but th that generation of children who are into that who have been worked like that are going to fucking love it so, uh, yeah, like, not I like Peppa Pig, but I'm like, I'm like Peppa Pig. Like, they, they attack their identity at a young age. It's all in these documentaries, The Men Who Made Us Spend. So I can't put them on the stream because I've done it a couple of times before and, you know, it fucked us over. But there's three, three episodes and they're fucking brilliant. They talk about planned obsolescence. They talk about childhood and how the children hold the purse strings and... Uh, some other stuff too so I won't go on about that too much but this is what we're talking about here as well isn't it an ethical discussion about marketing but isn't it funny that it has to come to computer games for us to have this oh you shouldn't be selling this unethical in a computer game or oh, gambling my like, gambling is terrible oh bad gambling isn't it what about Las Vegas what about Las Vegas that bad gambling well, like, that's an American institution, so, you know, 
don't know what you want to do about that. And uh, I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it's hard to point the finger at Genshin Impact when you've been sitting on that all your life, isn't it? And then what about like in England, we have this problem where all these gambling shops occupy all the high streets and all the people that get addicted to gambling can't go five minutes without walking past a gambling shop and the gambling shops sponsor all the, the stuff so if you're on the internet and you wanted to watch a video about Anthony Joshua recently who had a bit of a meltdown um, Josh like that for example and you just click on one of the uh, boxing channels so if I go down to um, like IFL TV here a boxing channel yeah so what have they got going on? On booking.com. Not this advert, you chuffer. And it will play after the ad, so I'm just going to reload that, you chuffer. This is a quicker advert. It's far cough. You can chuff off. Can you just chuff off with your adverts, frankly? <laughs> and it won't have a gambling advert now, will it? Everlast. They've got Everlast as a sponsor. And then this stuff, Anthony Joshua. So no, they didn't have a gambling advert, but quite a lot of these have gambling adverts on them. And they're all sponsored by gambling companies. Talk sport, probably not, but uh, I, I don't need to go on about this anymore. You know what I'm saying, don't you? Like gambling companies have a lot of clout because they make a lot of money, sports betting and gambling. So um, Las Vegas isn't targeted for kids. That's true. That's true. Although in a way it's targeted at people who <laughs> I mean, it's slightly different. Like they've got money, and they, I tell you what, it's not targeted at uh, people who are looking to do find uh, sound financial advice, is it? It's targeted at like party city, like let your hair down, go wild, spend a bit of money. No, like, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it is targeted at old people as well. I don't know, but it seems strange that you can have a whole city of gambling and be arguing about whether gambling's acceptable in society on the video game. Because the reason this is acceptable on the video game is because our societies, our societies are riddled with it. And unless we can get rid of that dry rot, um, I'm just going to put Gambling UK and see what comes up. There's a gambling commission, online gambling sites. So there are online gambling sites, isn't there? Unibet. Gamble aware. This is what I was looking for. Some sort of gambling addiction thing. Because, like, you know, our societies are now riddled with it to the point where it's ruining people's lives. So, like, gambling, yeah. Gambling. Like, it's not a new thing, is it? It's obviously not a new thing. And the bookie always wins. The casino always wins. But it, it just seems strange to me that we're having this discussion about this game and we're just going to accept that society's riddled with it, but we can have a discussion about this in this game and, like, make some points. And they still do it. Like, I mean, come on. It, 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 there's no like, oh, well, we have to make sure people know that it's bad. Everybody knows it's bad. Yeah. So, the next thing they'll do is battle passes. Battle passes oh, or four. any kind of format that requires daily logins or regular yeah. playtime. They will offer their best deals, their best, you know, gems to dollars or whatever, value, whatever V-Bucks to dollars, whatever it is. Whatever the value is will be best in the battle pass. Because because you've got to sign in every day and stay there all day and be on their game all day, yeah? The goal is to make the game part of your daily routine. Yeah, because exactly. once you build up a habit, then you're happier to spend money on it because it's something you do all the time. I even said this about Genshin Impact. I considered the Battle Pass because I've given enough of my time, but they've given me enough of their game development. I've enjoyed it so much and I've been there for that amount of time. I think they deserve 20 quid. A bit like if I was... Play, walking past like free to play stuff on the internet and a lot like our streams I and I over the years I had that ASMR channel and this is the way I think about the support of that as well is it's a bit like being a busker and you've put this out in the world for free and you hope that people throw some money in the hat and like I've got a tip me thing for that they've got a free thing and a battle pass and that and some people do want to give them the money they get a good deal on the primos or whatever like isn't this commerce now that we're talking about? Yes, they want you to keep coming back in. Uh, at Cafe Nero, they gave me a stamp every time I had a cup of coffee, so I kept getting my coffee off them. Again, we're in the world of marketing, and I guess because computer games, in a more like when we look back across the history of gaming, when you've got it on a cartridge, that marketing and that um, sales stuff is all about selling this package, this box with the, con the cartridge in. But uh, that's changed, hasn't it? 
that's changed. So now, like, you couldn't fit sales within this. Like, you had to sell this. Now, you give that away for free because within it is the shop. So, yeah, it's all changed now. I, I get that. I see what they're doing. I know they want me to make a habit. It's a bit strange for me because I was doing it. Any, I was playing the game I enjoy every day because I enjoy the game. That's the best way to get people coming back every day. And I think Genshin have nailed that as well. You do this for 20 plus days. It is now officially a habit in your brain. That is difficult. Again, where's he got that from? Where's he got that from? Hey, eh? why doesn't he show he's, he's working out? <laughs> difficult to break. Next thing they'll yeah, do. Yeah, I, I would. I would agree with that. Like battle passes, obviously get you involved with. But he, uh, I wonder what Asman's going to say here because let's bear in mind he's played World of Warcraft every day for the past ten years. So uh, I wonder what he thinks about you know building a habit with your favorite game. The game, etc. I don't think battle passes are bad. Like I, I, I don't really think they're bad because at a certain point. Like, the game getting you to spend money, and I, I don't even think it's bad, because with a battle pass, you know what you're getting. You're buying something, and the rewards for the thing that you are buying are laid out in front of you by obtaining these different things. Yep, absolutely agree. The only thing I would say is that slightly negative is if the things that are there for you to do are different from the things you would want to do so you know go and collect 200 valbries might not be on your list of things to do unless it's on the battle pass in which case now you're collecting valbries like they can uh they can manipulate the way you play the game through that and then the other thing like that can be good because they can work in harmony or it can be negative if they get you doing random runabout tasks uh, but the other thing that i would say was negative about this one was that you have to log in and if you don't you lose the money for that day you lose the primos for that day so i don't like that i think you should pay and get everything okay you've got to work towards it maybe you don't unlock everything in the game on day one yeah but like i don't think you should lose it if you don't log in um the core of the argument is who's the susceptible people and how to protect them not manipulate them don't mention that video okay we'll, we'll get to that a bit later then yeah um so categorically you're not gambling i have a problem with the gambling yeah oh he said it asman gold is that subconscious i have a problem gambling <laughs> with the gambling he means in the games he doesn't want and in society yeah or does he mean he actually has a gambling problem because i argued in a different video that even if you don't think gambling is good if you go to las vegas let's get that up because it's a good Images. Let's go in the casino. Wait. I should have chosen big pictures first, shouldn't I? I would argue that if you go in the casino, like Asmongold run it as a stream, didn't he? And it's not, you know, I'm not I'm not gambling off stream. I don't, I don't have a gambling problem. So for me, non-gambler, it would be like, we do a stream where we go in the casino and I gamble all night in the casino, and I'm saying, I haven't got a gambling problem, I'm only doing this for you on stream. Yeah, and then we do that, and we go home, and I'm like, wow, that was exhilarating, or devastating, or whatever it was. And then next week, I do another, or the next day, or whatever it is, I do another one of these streams. I asked him, was doing it daily. And then after a week of doing it, I say, I haven't got a gambling problem, but what are we doing next week? So I want to go to the casino. And I, <laughs> How can you not develop those feelings about gambling if you're engaged in it? You know, how do, all those things that get you hooked, those human emotions, the dopamine rushes, the, you know, the, the chasing the losses or whatever it is, those psychological mechanisms that are at play there, if you don't do it, you know, don't get bitten, you're not getting, but if you do it, you're engaged in it. It's very hard to be robotic and remove your emotions from the process and say, ah, this is what's happening here. I'm not getting sucked in, you know, and that's, that's how it works. So... Um, has Asman just admitted he's got a problem with gambling? Battle passes are not gambling. I don't really have a problem with them. Yeah. However, there is a spectrum of battle passes that are more and less uh, annoying. Yeah, agreed. And not just annoying, but problematic. Because I find that in Hearthstone as well, which is that I didn't want... Like, before I was happy not having a battle pass. They introduced a battle pass, you get loads more rewards and this and that. But I was like, hang on. Like, you're giving me loads of stuff that I have to buy on the battle pass. But... I have to work towards it. Whereas before, I was getting my stuff because I was playing the game. Now, I have to play the game to get it. It's, it's the same, but you've twisted it slightly. Before, I would have just got it by playing the game. Now, like, I have to play the game to get it. Do you know what I'm saying? 
it, it just felt slightly different. And the fact that it wasn't opt, you know, you opt in by paying. Before I didn't pay and I got free stuff. Now I pay and I get even more free stuff, but I have to play to get it because I've paid and I have to play. Uh. In your brain, that is difficult to break. Next thing they'll do, and this was baffling. I mean, listen, I've seen this before in other games. Genshin Impact took it to another fucking level. So? The idea of this is to have so many different currency types and tokens. So and Yeah, I heard this a million times. Asma's been talking about it a million times. It's all over Diablo. Gems, primos, trade them in for crystals. And then, you know, you've got books, which are... Uh, in Genshin specifically, you know, you've got your XP, which is books, and you've got your weapon materials and all sorts. So you don't know for a dollar or for a pound what things cost. Like, it's very hard and very difficult to work that out. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Again, is that unique to video games? No. Not at all. That's why casinos have chips for a start a point. Well, not not exactly. Obviously, chips mean that they can control the, the flow of money and it won't just be cash out of people's pockets. But... Also, it means that you're not actually physically gambling with money. You're gambling with tokens. So, you know, we're just talking about tokens, really, aren't we? And, yeah, I completely agree. It's done to confuse you. Yeah. Agree. I'm actually going to whenever... I, so, like, this week, probably, um, I'm going to do my big video on uh, Tower of Fantasy. Uh, where, where I review the game and I go through everything that, you know, is like positives, negatives, everything else in between. Uh, it's going to be probably this week. I am going to make a list ahead of time of all of the currencies in that game. Because I think that... Well, no, I agree with you there. Are you saying that 99% of people only spend money for the pink wishes? That, yeah, there's loads of different shit in the game, but you don't want it. <laughs> you just want to work out how many of the good wishes you can get. There's more than 30. I actually but knowing like if they if they say instead of 160 how much does a wish cost no you don't know i did all the maths earlier and we don't know how much one costs it's two pound fifty something like that uh if they sold them in the shop for two pound fifty it would be different than if you earn 20 primos from opening a chest you know if you were opening a chest and you knew how much financial value that was in wishes or if you go on the shop and you can say 10 wishes equals 20 dollars it's not that is it you have to buy crystals which you turn into primos which you turn into intertwined fate and then you use to wish so now you've gone three ways through a, ho a hoop and you're no longer thinking in terms of dollars and, and pence and it it just in the way your brain works you might as well be eating cakes by this point you've 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 translated things through a prism so it no longer is money now it's stuff and you don't have the same attachment to stuff as you do to money so we think there's more than 30 different currencies if you count like you you know like you've got matrix chips you've got a uh, matrix buy like ma the the rewards for getting one that you're going to use in the store and then you have it seasonal matrix chips like that's four right there that's a lot weird denominations things are bought in to make it so your brain cannot easily math out. Now this is funny because Asman said it, I've said it, and he's going to say it because we all reacted to the same How thing. How much you're actually spending? No, that, that's exactly right. I've said this a hundred times. Yeah, it's like you spend USD and you get crystals, and you use crystals to buy platinum points, and then you use platinum points to buy stars, and then after five different stars, you can convert that into a wish, and then you use a wish to buy a role at a character. But do you remember, like, I don't know, in England we don't have Chuck E. Cheese, but I believe in Chuck E. Cheese you go in and you play some games and you get some tickets and you get some prizes. I remember being a kid and going to the fair and, like, you pay some money and then you hook a duck. Do you remember the hook a duck? Do you remember the hook a duck? Probably gambling, isn't it? Do you remember the hook a duck? See, it, I don't know how, but that is exactly the one from my local fair. I mean, maybe they all look the same, but that is exactly the one from my local fair that when I was a kid, hook a duck to win. So you pay some money and then you reach out with your fishing rod and you hook a duck and underneath the duck has got a prize and then you exchange the duck for a prize. And if you want, you can keep hooking until you've got like 10 ducks and get the big prize or you might hook the big prize by random or, you know, but hook a duck. So what you're doing really is you're buying a, a fucking little teddy bear. Like they're the prize. The big prize is the big turtle at the back. You don't get that. The big eel or the big one. You don't get that. 
Same with Gatra, isn't it? You hook your duck and you get the fucking little teddy bear. And then do you want to carry on and do two more ducks and you can exchange five ducks for a big bear if you didn't get... Oh, I see. Like, so, but what's what's five ducks? Oh, it's five pounds. Like my, my dad had to spend five pounds so I could play hooker. Like, when you're a little kid, you're not thinking money, are you? Your parents are doing the money. But what you're doing is you're going into it. Hooker duck or any of these carnival games... I mean, hooker duck's a bit more fair because you're more likely to win. It's for kids. Whereas the ones that, uh, you know, you, you throw a hoop or you you do anything like that, it's fixed. Yeah, saying it in, in chat here, Josie, yes. Um, everything on the ferry is fixed. Um, some, some of them really are, like, not, like, no lie, just really fixed. And some remarkable people can still, uh, can still sort of um, shock physics and get a win. But yeah, hook a duck was, le I mean, it's fixed because what's underneath those ducks is any of them a big toy? Probably not. Only one of them is a big toy and it's probably got a broken hook and you can't get it. So, you know, hook a duck probably is fixed as well, but you get a toy. So the point is you're paying money to get a toy. Now, if you go, oh, you play the game as well. Oh, you play the game as well. If you go in a shop, you get a better toy for your money and you can choose it. Whereas on this, you hook the duck and you get what it said under the duck. And, and yet when you're a kid, you want to do that. It's fun. Your parents spend the money. What are we doing is we're turning money into ducks and then we're turning ducks into presents, into toys. So the, the concept of value, is the big toy worth five ducks? Well, it's the big toy. So five ducks is the big toy. But what if you went in a shop and just bought the big toy? And how much does it cost to hook five ducks? Now, actually, the big toy is not really worth that at all. But because you're lost in the moment of I've already won one duck and two more ducks equals a bigger thing, like you're thinking in ducks. <laughs> so you're better off just going in a shop and buying a teddy bear. But no one does. They hook the ducks and they have fun. That's hook a duck. So it's, again, endemic in our society. It's not like there's some new thing going on here that um, has been discovered in the gacha thing, is it? It's just, you know... And then if the role doesn't succeed, uh, these different currencies, you know, that idea is not novel. Chuck E. Cheese gives you tokens. The wish turns into. But your parents pay for the fucking goes on the machines, don't they? A, um, you, you know, like a, uh, a, like a, a dark star currency that if you put 55 of those together, that you can potentially buy the character on the store. And it's like a, a, a frag, yeah, a, a, yeah, a star fragment, exactly. And so if you put 150 star fragments together, you can make the character on your own. So it's like, how much does a star fragment cost? Bro, like, that's the reason- Although I'm laughing because that's the system I asked for. I said that would be a good idea before they released Tower of Fantasy. I said, you should earn not just, you know, star glitter from your failed wishes, but you should earn a ticket towards what you actually want. And you should be able to put together all your failed star glitter and say, look, I failed 30 wishes. I'm buying the character I want outright. Instead of a pity timer, I'm guaranteed. I'm working towards it. There's another Klee ticket. There's another Klee ticket. There's another Klee ticket. And then I'll have what I want. Finally, there's been a use for high schools teaching people Algebra 2 all the time. Finally, we find that we have a, we have a, a functional real life usage of Algebra 2. And what Genshin does is has Genesis Crystals, yep. Primo Gems, Intertwined Fate, A Quiet Fate, Star Glitter, Stardust, and more. But again, that is a bit deceptive because really what, what Genshin Impact has is Primo Gems with which you buy the Fate, which are the Wishes. So you call the Fate Wishes. So Primo Gems, you buy Wishes. You get Primos free in game, but if you want to buy them, you can buy them with Crystals, and they're a one-to-one -one transference. So again, Primos. I consider buying Crystals, buying Primos, because there's nothing else, like Jesse said, there's nothing else in the shop that you're going to buy. So it's money equals Primos equals Wishes. It's easier to work it out like that in your brain, quite simply. But yeah, there are all these different currencies but they don't all convert and you can't spend them all on different things and that star glitter comes after the wishes and yes you can sort of spend it on wishes again if you save it up but uh, it's a it's like a um an afterthought system isn't it it's like you know the dust that your wishes give you you can then recycle into more spending in the shop but uh he made it sound quite complicated but when you actually see the game it's not as bad as even, like, Diablo's worse. You buy Primo Gems, 
turn them into fate, to turn yep. them into star glitter, to roll for stardust. It's no. all no, 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 That was wrong. That was wrong. Wasn't it? Star glitter, stardust, and more. <laughs> you buy. That's you buy primos, yeah. So the crystals are a one to one with the primos. So crystals equals like you, your money that you're spending on crystals equals primos, yeah. Primo gems, turn them into. Turn them into fate, and that's a wish. That fate is a wish. You you then use that and you wish, and then that's job done. You spent your money and you've bought your wishes and you've got your stuff. What fate you also get is stardust at the end of the wishes, and you can like I said, you can recycle that back in the shop if you want. But you're not rolling for that. You're rolling for the characters and the stuff. Like this is like an afterthought. It's like a, sorry you didn't win. Here's a token to buy something else in the shop. And a star glitter to roll for stardust. To roll for stardust. I don't know what he means by that. They're two different kinds of star glitter that you get. One gives you good stuff and one gives you rubbish stuff. It's all a way to Wait. make it. Oh, I was actually pretty close. Damn, that's that that's crazy. I never played the game. That's crazy. That was crazy. I was yeah, I was pretty close. Confusing. So you can't tell how much dollars how you're spending. Works. Yeah. Well, that's the bottom line. You just can't tell how many dollars you're spending. But the bottom line there is, crystals equals primos. So how many? How much does the cost of the crystals? How many wishes do I get with those primos? So I worked it out for you. It was quite straightforward. Um, he was talking too fast and misspoke, but he wasn't too inaccurate. Okay, fair enough. He's not awful, although I do find him a little bit, <laughs> yeah, overexcited for my liking. <laughs> it's like shouting. And oh. Are there only three steps and not four, guys? Is that it? It's like, yeah, we're eating shit, but it's not warm. It's cold shit. It, it, it's like already like hardened up. It's not, we're not eating warm shit. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I get it. It's like that, isn't it? Well, it's like that, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't that what like, my life's like? I don't know, having to, you know, want to buy a Coca Cola or a fucking McBurger. I don't know, eating shit. <laughs> in McDonald's, you literally are eating shit. Uh, that was in. Um, fast food nation. There is shit in the meat. I mean, it would be um, it would be fast food nation. It would be like slander to publish this in a in a book, wouldn't it? So, uh, this book, Fast Food Nation, which became a film as well, um, literally has that line. There is shit in the meat written in it because what happens in the system in America is that you've got meat producers who just close the chuffing window uh, you have these meat producers in these big meat factories and what they do is they grind up all the meat and so there's like five meat packers in America like there's not that many that service this huge industry there's like five meat packers at top level and then it gets you know filtered down and in the process of grinding up like you know hundreds of thousands of cows some fecal matter gets into the grinder some not huge amounts like trace amounts maybe but uh, they can trace it <laughs> there is shit in the meat so yeah you know welcome welcome to the world of capitalism it's all only two okay that's fine like I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not promoting it. I don't eat that meat. I don't eat that. I'm not promoting it. I don't gamble. I'm free to play. I'm vegan. I'm ideologically opposed to the psychological manipulation of young people, all people, by other people. Yeah, yeah. Listen, obviously that makes it a little bit better. Yeah, I'm not, not going to say it does not make it better, but it is still, you know, it, it's still obfuscation. I mean, Diablo 4 is doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, they have like a premium currency. Why do you have a premium currency? Why do we need this? Why not just have it in dollars? Like, wh why not just have it in dollars? Well, th there's an obvious reason for that. I would defend the gaming industry here slightly, which is if you just have it in dollars, then how are you going to sell it in England? Because we have pounds. Well, then you're going to have to convert it. Well, what's the conversion rate between dollars and pounds? Well, that fluctuates daily so why don't we just have one thing in the game that's constant and then in your country it costs whatever you pay for it and in my country it might cost different because the fluctuation in the transaction rate but i'm still paying a set price it's like with hearthstone cards in dollars or in pounds actually they're slightly different values the same product is a slightly different cost in the two different countries but rather than fuck about they just go for the more like you know like 1999 price 
you know what I'm saying? Like, so, uh, yeah, it makes sense that if you're selling internationally, you might want to have a currency in your game that internationally you have different prices for in different markets, but you can be consistent within game for all players to understand. There is, there is that. And it's not because they want to help you. Uh, you also need premium currency because you can both buy it and earn it in game, but you don't need that many. Um, I don't know really the difference between premium and other currencies then maybe. Uh, but yeah, for it to work in a monetization thing, you have to be able to buy it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Not only do they have different currencies. That, that would, yeah, 100%. 100%. It's like, again, it's like this, isn't it? You're not going to be going in this casino and spending any money without the money. You know, those chips don't come for free, do they? And all that. Yeah, you have to, you're going to have to be able to be uh, handing over. The minute you can't hand over any more money is the minute they don't want you in the casino. But it's different in Genshin Impact because I've not been paying any money ever and they're quite happy to have me and give me loads of free stuff. So I guess they're trying to make me spend some money, aren't they? But it hasn't really happened for me. I'm yet, interestingly, whilst I'm telling you all my opinions on all these things, I'm yet to see something on this video that has spoke to me and said, oh yeah, that's something they did to me on Genshin and it worked and I was into it and I wanted to spend the money. You know, so far, nothing but they'll have different denominations so that's why things will be costed like 143 primo gems yeah it needs to be fun money it needs to put it into gem form and then it's from there it's fun money for you and you just spend it i without... think that's not the reason why i think the reason why is because it gives you so like for example in tower fantasy you buy six thousand four hundred and eighty I'm pretty sure. Am I right about that? 6,480. That's like the hundred dollars. And then you get a bonus 1,300. So if you get a bonus 1,300 and you put that with 1,600, so it's almost, so now you're like only 200 or 300 away from getting an entirely new tin pole. So it's this idea that you don't quite, like you think about filling up a bucket with water. And when you're filling up your bucket with primos until you've got enough, you spend and you get two thirds of a bucket. And then the next spend, well, you want to just top up the bucket, don't you? You just want a third of a bucket. Now you've got two thirds, you just want a third, but you can't buy it in thirds. You have to buy it in two thirds. So now you've got a one full bucket and one third bucket. So now you're going to spend again, aren't you? Because then you can fill up the second bucket. So now you bought three when you only wanted one bucket. You bought three packs. See how it ended up. So by never giving you exactly the, the right amount for what you want, you end up spending more. It's a bit like uh, in Genshin Impact, how we saw we needed 4.4 of those packs of primos to guarantee that, well, I can't buy 4.4. So actually the price is wrong, isn't it? Actually, the price is wrong. It was 4.4 times 90 that we did on the calculator, but actually it's five. Isn't it? Actually, it's five times 90 because you can't buy 0.4. You can buy one of the smaller packs maybe, but, you know, the idea is thus that, the idea is thus, that, uh, the, <laughs> I'm laughing because DSP says thus and I threw it into conversation in a funny way, like taking the mic, but I won't go there. Um, the idea is simply that, like I explained the first time, you don't buy a full bucket. You buy nearly a full bucket, and then to fill that bucket, you buy another one, and then you've got, and you're on and on and on. You've always got some left over in your bucket. There's always another reason to fill up that bucket, because you might as well, because otherwise you're throwing away your bucket. And you never quite get the right amount to top the bucket exact. <laughs> I just want to buy 10 more wishes. Do I have to buy 20? Well, if I bought 20, I might as well have the next 20 as well. Because You see what I'm saying? So, so it's like, cause it's, they're, they're always trying to fucking, uh, they're, they're trying to keep you edging. They always want you edging and they keep you edging by just keeping you, you know, 10 currency, 35 currency away from that big 10 pole. That's Not really why. knowing the value. Another thing they do is they highly incentivize social proof people. And this is more of a human psychological principle. People are much more likely to not share their losses. Wait, is her name Keking? Wait, really? Kaching? Oh, isn't that a little bit on the nose? That's what I said. Kaching. Calling, calling one of the the rare pulls Kaching. I mean, damn. Like, I mean, I, I I don't know. I'm just saying.
<laughs> they, it, it's Chinese. Yeah, but like, I mean, they it's still the same it sound. Like the it's still the same sound, isn't it? Ka Ching. <laughs> you know, the English version. I mean, I don't know. And happily share their wins. Yeah. YouTubers now upload videos saying people do this. Um. Okay. Agree here. It, this is more of a feature of gaming and social media as well. That you're more likely to show your wins than your losses. However, however, right. Uh, however, I would say that in Genshin Impact, it is common standard practice to show your entire range of pools. I've seen streamers showing all of their pools, and me as a streamer, I've been showing whatever happened, and if it's been good luck, good luck, bad luck, bad luck. And actually, I've been watching a few, you know, little shorts sometimes, and when I see someone, I watched one, and he, this guy, it was on his, like, second pool, he's, he did a 10 pool, his first 10 pool, and he got a um, lady with the hat, Mona. He got a five star in his first temple and he was like, I don't even know what this is about. I don't even know if it's good or not. Streamer luck. And I felt like, oh, fucker, you motherfucker. I wish I had that. Like, I didn't feel good about him and his luck and happy for him. I felt like, oh, yeah, fucker. Maybe that's more about me than it is about him. But when you watch somebody like, surely, I, I feel my pools collection of my funny pools like getting Bennett. Maybe I should edit them together. You know, getting Bennett, getting Kaching, <laughs> getting these things that I didn't necessarily want, getting those duplicates <laughs> and feeling like I got kicked in the crotch. I'm sure that is better for a viewer than, oh, look at all the great stuff I've got. No, it's showing off. So maybe it works both ways. Maybe people show their failings as well as their wins in this because it's got comedic value and stuff. Whereas I agree with what he's saying as a psychological point that people are like, like it happens with gambling. You ask somebody who's into gambling how much they win or lose. They'll tell you about, oh, I won. I just, the other day I put five pounds on and I won fucking 500 pounds off this gamble. And, and they go, oh, really? And if you ask them all the, you know, if you ask them to itemize all the gambling, then they're missing out fucking loads of ones where they've lost. And they're telling you about this one that they've won. So you get a, a distorted view. Um, it's very relevant to Genshin because their Hoyo app, lab app, the Hoyo Lab app, it's mandatory to have it so you can install the game and it functions the same way as Facebook. You mean that launcher that I've got? It's completely designed to promote conversation between the people playing the game and talk about the game. You're right, actually. And as well, I'll tell you what, um, in some of those little events that they do, uh, they send Paimon sends me a message and says, share this on Facebook and I'll give you some more. And I'm like, I don't have Facebook Paimon, so shut up. And I'm like, she's like, share it on Twitter and I'll give you some more. And I do because I have Twitter. Um, the site where you play the web events. All right, yeah, I've been on that recently because I did the recent web event. I didn't realize it had, because it, it opens up in my other browser. It opens up in Explorer and I use Firefox. So I'm like, that's a Genshin Impact browser. I've done the game, leave me alone. But yeah, I guess other people might be more inclined to do that. And you get primos for logging in, don't you? I have seen that you get stuff for logging in. And I've thought, that's beyond me. I'm not having that. That's missed because <laughs> I'm not doing it. But you're right, they encourage it. Um, but then again, what you're saying here is you're encouraging your player base to be a community and you're providing the network for them to be a community without them having to use other social networks. So that's not even a bad thing, is it? Like, but it is. It's a mechanism of the cycle. Ah, oh, good and bad. Well, in that case, it's Facebook or about. Oh, of course, yeah. So we're going to say this, point the finger at Genshin Impact, worst gacha game ever. Then provided their community with a place to share ideas. But we're talking about it on a social network like YouTube, which is exactly the same thing. <laughs> and before you watch this video, you'll have seen an advert, not on my account, because I'm not monetized, but um, they will put an advert on my non-monetized content, you can be sure. And uh, you know, it's all about marketing and advertising, isn't it? So um, it's funny the way we're pissing out of the tent, but actually we're pissing into the tent. Everyone's pissing everywhere in the tent. I don't, that's a bad analogy. Um, you're not saying it's bad or good, you're saying it's a good point. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Um, I'm trying to play devil's advocate and look at both sides of the coin. I'm sort of defending Genshin because I actually have not found this to be a reason that I felt necessary to spend money. I've watched streamers with cool stuff. I am a streamer and I've got my own little niche of cool stuff. I've got all the little ones. <laughs> but despite that, I've not felt compelled to spend money to get Kamisato Ayaka or anything. It's just a feature of life. You know, I can go on the internet and YouTube and watch somebody driving a Lamborghini, but I'm not going to go and max out my credit card to get one. It's just the way it is. 
and happily share their wins. Yeah. YouTubers now upload videos saying- People do the same thing, man. So like with Tower of Fantasy, people all the time would send me links. They're like, bro, I got three uh, SSRs in one pull. Bro, I got two SSRs in one pull. I got the, you know, the, the scythe twice. They do that all the time. Maybe that's a human feature, or maybe it's more of a feature of, because we talked about Genshin having a different demographic. Maybe it's a different feeling in the Genshin community. I don't know, because I'm not deep in it to see this. But, uh, you know, he's coming from a world of like, World of Warcraft players, MMO players, who are all showing off the best sword they got. So they're all shouting about all their best pools. Maybe it's more of a feature of the community specific, or maybe it's a human nature thing. Like I said, gamblers often tell you about the ones they win, not the ones they lose. I don't know. Certainly, if I was to make an edit of what I think would come across better on YouTube, I would edit all of my failed pools because they're funnier, they're more human, they're more relatable, and it's the truth of what happened. <laughs> so I can't really show off all my cool stuff because I got a few cool things, but I guaranteed Klee, didn't I? I guaranteed her by doing my saving up and guaranteeing it. So it was different. Well, I see it constantly. Because it's the same thing, like, you guys, every time Train gets a big win, people come into my chat, and they're like, bro, he just won $28 million. That means he's... Talking about other streamers who actually gamble on their streams. ...only $48 million away from breaking even. And it sounds like a lot of money, but they've got into this position where the companies give them money to gamble with. So, it, you know, it's essentially gambling $40, but you put zeros on the end. And at the end of it all, they make money because they're promoting gambling, and the gambling companies are paying them to promote gambling, and they don't lose money because they're not really gambling with their own real money, and it looks extraordinary, and it's part of the marketing it might happen i lost money on kitchen in fact they upload the video of their rare pull and that creates a false heuristic in your brain that the odds of it are higher than they actually are you yeah, are more likely to think it's survivorship possible bias. when you see other people getting it all right you know right I mean? so that's like the lottery then isn't it or las vegas or anything isn't it like watching the machine go ching 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 ching, ching and everyone looks uh, yeah, that's just like life again, isn't it? So you can't say that, uh, like, in the UK, we've got adverts for, like, the lottery. I mean, if I just put lottery, you know, in images. Actually, no, not lottery, news. Look, do news. I won 10 million on the lottery, but half of it vanished as I spiraled out of control. Scotswoman faced postcode lottery. That's not right. <laughs> um, couple claimed to have cracked code for winning lottery and 23 million pounds. Ex-soldier regrets winning lottery as his life spiraled out of control. Um, this struggling firmly mum wins life-changing lottery jackpot. Like, people who win the lottery go in the news. They won the lottery. Happens every, every week someone wins the lottery. So it's quite often, like 52 times a year, there's somebody else to go in the news. They don't all want to go in the news, but every every week, it's like, how many, is it likely someone's going to win the lottery? Yes, it's absolutely guaranteed as a factor of one. Like, it's going to happen every week. But is it likely it's going to happen to you? Not very likely. So yeah, you know, welcome to the world again. Give you a direct quote here. <laughs> this is a direct quote again from a game developer that makes mobile games. Do not tell your players that the majority of people do not spend money. That is cancer that will kill your monetization. Well, uh, I, I, he watched the video of the, I remember the- Am I therefore cancer that will kill Genshin Impact's monetization? Because I feel like I'm, if anything, defending and promoting Genshin Impact because of the beauty and the art within the game that I've grown to uh, find compelling. Uh, the monetization I find disgraceful in a way like I think gambling is totally wrong and it shouldn't be available to young people through this mechanism on the other hand I have not ever spent any money so guy said that um he watched the video that we watched with like the let's go whaling uh seminar thing. oh there we go he's even and, saying and like it the let's go whaling seminar so again it's all out of this video and our friend here that we're reacting to has watched this video. I heard a game developer actually say, yeah, you watched the video that we've all watched on the internet, yeah. Yeah, the majority, you want it to seem like everybody is spending money, and if you don't spend money, you're the loser. It's like back in third grade, where everybody else had the Pokemon lunchbox, but you've got the Batman one from like 19... And that's marketing through films and cartoons isn't it so it's exactly that stuff i said plus it's not just that 
it's you're not wearing the right trainers. 83. It's not even the core cool Justice League. It's beyond one company promoting their ideas. It's become a social norm. You're not wearing the right trainers. Batman? No, it's like that fucking goofy bullshit that they had back then. So it's like you, you create kids that are like, you're the only one, and like the other kids make fun of you. You know, they don't want to play tag with you at recess. And, you know, before you know it, you're asking your mom to buy you a Pokemon Lunchbox. That's it. Adam West was cool. Well, it was... I'll say it probably aged better. I mean, this is so much more pertinent for the MMOs, but not so much more pertinent for Genshin Impact. But uh, I see, I don't know how that works in Genshin Impact. Everyone having cool stuff and you not having it. The idea that everyone else is spending money and you're not. I don't know how that works. I don't know where you'd see that happening. I don't know, how, like maybe within this community thing, they're suggesting it. But um, I think it's a lot harder to do online, isn't it? Because you don't, maybe in co-op, maybe in co-op, but you don't see each other in that way you know you're not physically wearing the trainers around each other we're playing the game and we're playing a one player game against the computer so like maybe online maybe social media but uh harder to make people feel that everyone's spending money because at least now it's it's funny because of how dumb it was that is a fucking direct quote <laughs> do not tell them that yeah. people don't spend money that is cancer. Yeah. Whatever you do, it, if you spend money in a game, pressure. other players should know about it. And that incentivizes Absolutely. them to think, okay, they're doing it, I can do it too. That's, That's why you have uh, leaderboards. That's why also Diablo Immortal has, uh, they have servers. I think that Diablo Immortal doesn't need servers. I think that they have servers intentionally to break up the leaderboards, to, en to encourage more people to wail for the top of those leaderboards proof works okay they also are more direct for example in genshin impact they had a promo where if you took an in-game photo of your rare pull like if you pulled a rare hero and took yeah. a photo of it you got free primo gems oh i would do so that. you were incentivized to tell and to take a photo and share your friends yeah. that you got <laughs> something cool Big Mice, which makes you free. think that it's fucking yeah. going works for it okay uh jesse's saying a lot of people interact both in co-op and when you add them as friends you can talk to them so i didn't know you could talk to people so they can talk to each other and share what they pulled and he's saying here they were incentivized to do it by giving you free stuff if you got stuff and put it promoted it um strange actually i don't necessarily feel that like out of all the marketing things that i've heard of this one sounds the le least sinister isn't it? It's kind of like showing off the cool stuff you've got to encourage other people to get it, yeah. I mean, it's exactly that. But it's so overt and obvious, isn't it, what it is. And you're also showing the 0.6% chance of getting it. So, I don't know, maybe it's just me and the way my brain works, but when I play the lottery, I don't go in there thinking, oh, I saw that newspaper article the other day about that bloke who won the lottery, therefore I'm more likely to win today. Give me a ticket. Uh, it just doesn't happen to me. I just still reason it out as it's one in 14 million. Like, please don't give me a ticket. I, I don't want to pay any fines. Um, so I guess it's a factor of society again, though. We're talking about who's got the cool trainers and, you know, Versace. And, you know, I, I look at influencers online and see it as a far more seething pit of vile disgust than this. But, yeah. And again, I think it's an example free. here. All I have to YouTubers, do is advertise again, their always sharing their insane luck. Oh, they are. These insane luck. A oh, hundred fucking percent, right? That's another factor of YouTube, isn't it? There though, like you're trying to get popular on YouTube, and you're doing the thing that the algorithm is pumping back to you. Like maybe she made three different videos, and one was great luck, and one was bad luck, and the bad luck video didn't get many views, and this got loads of views, so now she's making another one like this. I mean, it, there's all sorts of other factors that are coming into this it's only got seven thousand views a year ago so it's not huge it's just that it exists as a fact factor on the internet it's not to say that is like evidence of it being i mean it obviously is part of the the system isn't it that's what they're going for and people are playing into it. this is my thing about influencers as well i don't want to be a genshin impact influencer to say to people oh go and spend money in fact i'm free to play so i can feel conscience clear Never spend it. If you're going to watch me and get influenced to do anything, you're going to be influenced to not spend money. So that's fine. But uh, I wouldn't want to inadvertently be promoting something that was ethically bereft by, you know, doing videos about it. Just like gambling is another great example. Let's say I 
um, did gambling videos about me betting on the horses and like I did well on YouTube but I encourage people to gamble I wouldn't go near that I wouldn't touch it and there's loads of influencers doing loads of stuff so it's not just you know this particular thing this in fact this is the least sinister end of the wedge isn't it you know you've got people making advent calendars out of bullshit and charging 50 quid <laughs> you've got all sorts you've got people selling pink sauce these days haven't you you've got all sorts people are just you know people of jackals insanely lucky the, the the reality i mean like let's be honest right that's seven thousand views it's not like this is changing the world uh, press enter in game i'll have to look at it i'll have to look at it i'm surprised i didn't know they had voice chat though uh, however if you go and you watch some of the like lottery wins people have on like steak and shit these videos have millions of views people yeah. are just going ape shit about them and, and like also i'll tell you that uh you know like lost ark what was my most popular content on lost ark besides fucking doing the the raids at the beginning right it was doing honing it was honing and and, and even with Tower so he's talking about in lost ark you spend essentially money microtransaction money for all these like crystals and things and you use them to upgrade your weapons or your, your stones and it's not guaranteed it's a bit like rolling for artifacts. It's not guaranteed. So you spend the money, you press the button, 20% chance of it being good, it's bad, that's wasted money. Let's do another one, right? That's, it's like scratch cards. It's like buying scratch cards, essentially that is. So again, like really bad in the game, predatory mechanics, scratch cards. Like go in any shop, go in any news agents, go and buy yourself a scratch card. And like, so yeah, bad agree personally don't think we should be doing all the gambling in society maybe this is highlighting that point but it's hard to point the finger at Genshin Impact and say it's terrible when <laughs> society's rife with it again for a fantasy what are people waiting for they're waiting for the gamba they want to see if i get the what uh, what's in the box what's in the and box there's a lot of viewers and watching everybody that goes and they say oh well this is so boring well then why did the numbers not why did the numbers show the opposite why, why does why does the viewer count go up every time i do it or anytime anybody does it it's nothing special to me but it's pretty easy that anybody can see that there's a trend here people like watching this I mean, maybe we like what I mean you watch quiz shows where people like take the gamble at the end and it's the exciting bit don't you uh, people like a bit of risk but personally I don't find gambling good content myself so maybe I'd say I mean he's got figures that seem to prove it we're talking about demographics on Twitch though so we're not talking about across the board I mean I don't know but maybe I'll say Flamingo gacha pulls. The, the best part about it is like you you farm people on both sides. You farm people that like the content and people that hate the content and like to see you lose. Farming haters and simps at the same time, that's hard to do. But Gamba content does that. And if you look on YouTube, this is there's millions of these people sharing their insane luck. Oh yeah. In polling. Um, wow. And, and, and it's just, just to open the air, it's to clear okay. the air. I would also say that when you're on something like Twitch or YouTube, you're relying. Uh, certainly on Twitch, when you're playing a game, you know, you're reliant on the quality of that content. You react to it and react with it and create the content, but you're relying on the quality of that to attract the audience, aren't you? So I'm lucky with Genshin Impact. I believe that it's quite easy to follow. It's got good characters. It's got interesting stories, so a viewer can follow along with the game. But if I was playing something a bit more complex or a bit more... Uh, strategic or something I've, unless i talk through my thinking there's less for you to follow through uh, follow along with whereas with gambling they've already made these machines and these slot machines and these mechanics to be really dazzling and you know make you salivate so it's a bit like watching cooking shows isn't it it's easy to follow <laughs> it's easy to see what's happening and it makes you salivate so it's already like it doesn't matter about the streamer it doesn't matter about who's presenting the gambling like the thing itself is already designed to hit all those psychological buttons so saying gambling content gets more viewers might be because you're exposing a, a group of people here maybe younger gamers maybe slightly more younger male gamers maybe Asmongold's demographic maybe and uh, you're saying to them right now have a look at this gambling thing and they're going to go oh it's like saying like you know doing a wet t-shirt competition gets lots of views well yeah because the young boys like looking at the boobs don't they so it turns out as well that like while well, this testosterone's flowing around in this certain demographic that the risk and the reward and the spinning wheels and the lights and the you know whatever else goes along with these gambling 
concoctions to make them appealing to this demographic appeals to this demographic. So uh, maybe that's uh, not a surprise. I am 100% guilty of this. I have spent hundreds of dollars before I had any, back when I was broke in college, hundreds of dollars on law skins. And that's the big, that's not even really a gotcha mechanic yet. But, but again, I don't know what law skins is. Is, is baby food compared to what games have gotten good at. I, let me think, have I ever bought a skin? I think I might have got one of the Mists of Pandaria helmet skins because I got... Uh, Asmongold is actually like ethically opposed to selling microtransactions within World of Warcraft because he thought that it was like a floodgate opening, the store mounts, stuff like that. Slightly different conversation. Me personally, never been into buying anything in video games. I had Fortnite, got to the point where I said I've played this a bit. Like they've had, I've had the fun out of it. I'll give them the five pound for the battle pass or whatever. And I got a couple of characters and then I got free V bucks with the battle pass and that's it. I've never bought a skin. I've never put any more money in than that, but I did initially do the battle pass. I think that's the only thing. Uh, there's nothing else on computer games other than content DLC, um, buying the actual games. I don't think there's anything else where I've bought skins in Hearthstone. I've had to buy cards, uh, yeah, I'm not really one for buying non like things that don't matter and just have aesthetic value in a computer game that I may not be playing in 10 years time. I'm, I'm not that worried about, but. Got my tier three shoulders and I thought the Lich King, like that crown of Indra's Winter would fit really good on my character. Didn't you buy skins in Fortnite? No, I've, I've never bought a skin in Fortnite. I bought skins in Apex, but I did that for stream content. I did, uh, to be fair, I do have, I, I've spent over, the, this is over 10 years. Uh, I've spent uh, like $1,000 on PoE. Yeah, again, not against microtransactions as long as the actual game doesn't cost money, says Josie. I need to buy the actual game and then the content in game. No thanks, yeah, exactly. If I'm spending money on the game, I want things unlockable within the game. That's the whole point of the game. If you've taken something good and made me spend additional, then that's like, why, that's rude. <laughs> It's like I sit down to eat my, my dinner and I order a vegan burger and chips, please. And they bring me the burger and they say, you ordered the chips, but we're only giving you some of the chips. The rest of the chips, you have to buy extra. And I'd be like, but it's part of the fucking meal. And you're like, yeah, but they're, they're a side of chips. I don't want a side of chips. I want burger and chips as a meal. Yeah, they're an extra side of chips. And also the top of your burger is going to cost you extra as well, the top bun. What do you mean the top bun is going to cost me extra? I bought the burger. No, you haven't really top bun is extra you don't get that <laughs> like come on leave me alone yeah microtransactions as well i found them a bit insidious that people would be designing things for a game that are cool or interesting or good and then you don't like you have to pay extra for that and extra for that like just put it isn't that diluting what's good about the game and putting it behind a paywall yeah so um and microtransactions in terms of Fortnite though, like because there is nothing that affects the game and there's such a diversity of different things. At first I was dead against Fortnite skins. I was like, you should be able to just buy the game and get all the skins. But then after years of going by and I'm starting to see this huge wealth of, and then I realized that it's actually a marketing tool for companies now, Batman skin, isn't it? You know, the new Star Wars thing is being promoted in Fortnite now. So you've got a skin that you actually buy so that you're an advert for other players. Um, there's all that going on, so I find it insidious and disgusting. But the, the idea that, uh, I mean, they, they didn't, they don't have a character created to do that, so you can't create your own character. So you have to buy the skin. But the idea that everyone should have something for them and there's diversity and we can represent diversity with this huge, like almost infinite trove of diverse skins is possibly a good thing. But and to fund it, microtransactions. Okay, I understand because I don't want to buy that skin, but somebody else might. So, like that's how, that's kind of all right. Um, I'm free to play, providing microtransactions that don't affect the game. Doesn't seem that insidious, but uh, yeah. Again, we're on this new market, aren't we? Though we're talking about Fortnite because it's a a different thing from Ocarina of Time. Like, imagine if there were skins in Ocarina of Time that you bought separately. The closest thing has been you get a special edition or you get an amiibo and you get something special in the game. And to me that felt rubbish because I'm not getting the amiibos or the special edition. So I've not got something cool in the game that someone else has and I never will have because I'm not affording the special edition. So, you know, that always used to seem rubbish to me. In fact, in some ways, I know this, this whole thing is about making people 
spend more because they can see all this good stuff that they're not getting but in some ways isn't it a bit like watching someone drive past in a ferrari who's waving the money out the window and you go well you know that's good but i'm not getting a credit card and spending it on a ferrari so fuck you fuck this game i'm out like if it goes too far that way it pisses me off people who show off their you know extreme luck or extreme greed or whatever it, it switches me off so i you know, maybe there's a ne negative there as well at some point. Most of that was whenever I was already a successful streamer. So it's like it wasn't it, it wasn't a financially uh, damaging thing for me. Today with psychological warfare. That's that's level one. <laughs> OK, that's like pretty easy to get around. I just yeah. have a weak mind. But if I was impressionable and playing Genshin Impact, there is so much more than that. And the fact is, if I wanted that skin and couldn't buy it directly, but had to buy 60 packs or 60 poles to get a sh I think you'd like to tell him what more there is rather than just we understand that you can't get it it's a gacha system and people want it but they can't get it what's that more is that more the psychological pull of the story is it the writing in the story is it the characterization is it the design of the characters around the demographic and what that demographic might see in an ideal partner uh, you know what is it what are we talking about and why is it sinister shot at getting it and then do it again to level it up that's where it starts to get crazy. That's where they are really taking advantage of the Skinner box nature of our minds. This is a video I'd like to show you. Oh, thank God. Let's oh, go no. whaling. Thank God. Thank God he's showing. Because obviously that's where a lot of this has come from. Thank God he's showing the, like I said, he's not going to show the working out. So many content creators take stuff from GDC. There's actually a channel that I'm not going to say the name of, but I, I see a GDC video come out and I watch it and it's now long and it's really good and it's interesting. And then I see like a 20 minute <laughs> like 10 minute you know easy to digest just the main points made on a different channel and they don't say oh this is the new gdc video they say oh you know i'm a game developer and i'll teach you about game development watch my video and i just think well, just, why don't you watch the full hour long one on gdc and please show your working out <laughs> at least he's showing us the work for monetizing mobile game yeah. players with free oh, to play no see i knew this is what he saw to remind yeah. you that the best way to make sure of both your Retention and your monetization is to make sure you have enough of an in-game economy. I've literally just shown this, haven't I? This is where you sell the faster progress, as we just discussed. So we're all on the same page here. There. This is only a uh, small part the of The thousand up there is actually clearly low-balling it. Top-grossing games have in-game economies worth tens of thousands. That's how you can uh, keep people in there. They have lots of things to oh, do, yeah. to, to stuff to upgrade, to progress along. And that's how you can, can make them, them spend a lot <laughs> as well, since you can, for instance, uh, give a huge uh, discount on something, you know. Basically what he's saying is that you need to be able to get, uh, like if you're a new whale to a game, there better be a thousand plus dollars of things you can spend your money on. The days of games oh, yeah. having like relatively small level of pay to win, like horse armor for $2, are completely gone. Well, he's referring to the original first uh, microtransaction, which was in, I believe it was, is it Morrowind? And he's talking about Todd and Bethesda. And he said, this is just an armor for a horse. It's no big thing. It's just, we're going to sell this separately. And that was like the the first crack in the wall of the microtransactions and that was the first one that you know got through and then that crack grew bigger and then here we are uh, the iron horse armor uh, I, I think um hang on what was he just gonna say here? plus dollars of things you can spend your there's got to be thousands of things to spend your money on uh Genshin impact's interesting like this because the wish system the gacha system is like the answer to that isn't it it's like the answer to that. It's like they've said, how do we make loads of stuff in our game that you can spend money on? Well, Fortnite have tried to make a, a million different skins. So now there's a million things to spend your money on. What we've got here, though, is you spend your money and you don't get what you want. So you spend it again. <laughs> there's not that many things to spend your money on, but you're not actually spending your money on them. You're spending it on the, the gambling. Game. So it's infinite. You can infinitely gamble until eventually you get everything. But like that takes a long time, doesn't it? If you if you save up your primos. So it does, in a way, stretch out that that reward, giving you primos instead of giving you... Like, imagine everything I'd got... A I was complaining, oh, at the end of this, we've done all Ningguang stuff. We've done all the Ningguang stuff, so we should just get Ningguang as a character. 
But then I've got her immediately. Bang, done. By the time I've finished all the story, I've got all the characters. Now what? This does stretch that out. It definitely does. You get primos instead. And primos, it's that exponential thing of fragments become shards, become gems. <laughs> and six, you need three bits to make a fragment and then three fragments to make a shard and then three shards to make a gem and by the time you're making gems you're talking exponential amounts of boss runs so it's that isn't it it's stretching it out as you get to the higher end the the progress gets smaller gets smaller eventually you're chasing one character that you don't have and you keep pulling these other four stars and eventually you're chasing one five star you don't have and god help you if you keep wishing for that and pulling other five stars in duplicate do you know what I mean? Eventually, it's going to take a long time to get there. So, in in some ways, that's perfect for what we're talking about, which is keeping players engaged over a four-year period. We're going to keep them updated with, with events. We're going to keep them updated with new content. The game is going to be big, and it's going to take four years. But we don't want them to get every character in the first year, because if they do, through whatever system we do, monetization, buy it straightforward, pay for it direct if they do they're going to be bored and they're going to walk away before we've even started showing them the next expansion so in some ways the gacha system is like made marriage made in heaven and i don't like it because i don't like gambling and i don't like it because i want to be able to buy the things i want and i don't like it for all these other reasons but but i would say and it's strange to say it in defense of genshin impact in this you know devil's advocate in a way here i'm just taking the like maybe this is not my opinion maybe i'm just making the argument for it but in some ways whilst gacha is great because it's communist like making an argument for this rich people pay a lot i don't pay anything we all get the game for free yay um like someone rich has paid for me to play so they've got yoima i haven't but i've got everything for free playing the game for free so someone's paid for me to do that by gambling for yoima um in another way uh it keeps it stretched out doesn't it i've not got that opera singer and i'm not going to get her for a good long while so there's still something for me to look forward to to work towards in genshin impact whereas if i had been able to buy everything for real money at a good value price which is what i want bear in mind what you want isn't always what you want is it it's not always what you need it's not always the right answer because sometimes you say i want this and i want that and you eat all the burgers and all the chocolate and then you're sick <laughs> so i could have binged i could have got all the characters on day one you know, I could have had that and I'd be bored now, wouldn't I? What am I looking forward to? What am I waiting for? You know, it does stretch it out in a way. And in a way, that's helpful to the game developers because they want you to be there engaged and enjoying it. For and it's helpful to us, the players, because it keeps us... Maybe they called it edging earlier, you know, sexual connotation there, but maybe they called it edging. But, you know, it keeps us edging towards a bit, a bit more, a bit more progress, a bit more. Isn't that part of the fun? Isn't that part of the joy? There's this double-edged sword here. It's not all bad, is what I'm saying. And in defense of Genshin Impact, or the people that make it, or the mechanisms that we're exploring here, it's interesting to me that we're saying it's a net negative that it keeps you coming back. It's a net negative that it makes you want to keep playing. It's a net negative that it makes you keep playing every day. But actually, if we were to say, take a step back and say, these people play World of Warcraft, and they don't feel compelled to come back every day, they're not that bothered with the game. These people play Genshin Impact and they want to play every day. They don't miss a day. They love the fucking game. They're always enjoying it. Like, as long as you're enjoying it, as long as it's not like, oh, I fucking hate this and I have to turn it on so I can get some primos. Like, you know, as long as you're enjoying it, who's winning? Who's winning? You know, what's a game for? So it's interesting to explore these things. I'm not defending it completely because I do think it's a predatory mechanism, but it's interesting to say isn't it that it's bad or good um in chat Josie says if a game's cheap it's got a lot of content it'd be okay with wow you need to buy the game and keep playing each month and then the microtransactions yeah oh yeah they're like you know they're like claws are in deep there aren't they <laughs> it's like a study in how far can we go isn't it but uh isn't that life isn't that what you if you were talking to your um the thing i find funny about world of warcraft is that people often and Genshin Impact would be a good example of this. People, we're talking these, about these conversations. We're talking about game development. We're talking about psychology. We're talking about ludology. We're talking about uh, game, like the idea of gamification of of your daily life. You know, going to work could become a game for you. 
game theory in that aspect. Um, ludology is the study of games and the practice of playing them. Game theory is the study of turning things into games and why people like to, you know, are conditioned to respond to that. Uh, so we're talking about all these things, but also if you were to sit down in the office with the accountant at World of Warcraft, the accountant who doesn't know anything about orcs and dwarfs and has never played a fucking game of, you know, Hearthstone or anything, and they just look at the books and say, look, this thing here is making us a lot of money. Can I have more of that? And they say, that's the microtransactions thing. We don't want to put lots in it. It would spoil the integrity of the game. And they say, what do you mean integrity of the game, you dickhead? Can we have more of the money? <laughs> You fucking idiot. And they all laugh. This guy, did you hear him? He's integrity of the game. <laughs> oh, you little you orcs, you little orcs, and you're wanking around with your little swords, you wanker. Get more money. Now, do you know, can you not imagine Bobby Kotick in the office? You know, and they're like, well, Bobby, you know, we, we really think the player base would respond well to this, uh, you know, this system. And he's like, yeah, but, you know, fuck the player base. I think their wallets would respond well to this system. So, you know, which one are we going to go with? Oh, well, you know, the traditional format of an MMO is about cooperation and, you know, we want to make players aware that playing together and creating groups and uh, <laughs> communities. And Bobby Kotick's like, really? Ask the accountant. The accountant, is, is, do communities and groups make more money for us, yes or no? The accountant's going to go like, yes. And he's going to go, okay, good, get on with it. And then the accountant says, but only if, and he goes, wait, <laughs> do it this way. I, you can imagine like when they're at this big end of the business, we talk about all these mechanisms and we're talking about game design and I believe in games as artworks. So I think indie game developers go through all this as an ethical turmoil. You know, I bet, I bet I know indie game developers and I bet guarantee they've had conversations in their own soul about how to monetize. Yeah. And I know that, for example, Tommy Palm, after making the big money on some of the monetization practices that other companies maybe, you know, started to steer the ship a bit beyond him. I'm not speaking for him here. I'm just assuming maybe he felt later about being more um, philanthropic because like, maybe he felt a little bit guilty about the amount of money he made off something like Candy Crush. I don't know. But it's easier to feel that once you've made the money. <laughs> So yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? We're talking about game development, game design and psychology, but actually some of these big companies are looking at this in a financial spectrum and don't give a shit about ethics <laughs> and laugh when we're talking about why or why not we should make these decisions in games because if it makes more money, that's what they want. Pay to win, like horse armor for $2 are completely gone, okay? If you want to, you should have no end, <laughs> according to the game players, of the amount of things you can spend your money on. It should be tens of thousands, a hundred thousand. Exactly. Could you imagine being in the office and explaining to your accountant, I and mean, when we're saying in the office, we're talking about big companies now, aren't we, with lots of money. So explain to your accounts division that there's a limit how much the players can spend. You'd be like, what? But it's unlimited, we're online. Yeah, but you know, they can only buy one set of armor, can't they? No, we'll make it 10, make it 100, make it a million. Do not limit them. What are you doing? Like, they'd be ch the accountants would be chasing the developers around the office with sticks. Allow them to spend more money, you idiots. Like, you know, it's just basics of, like, if you're running a business, isn't it? Like, when I used to do hairdressing, it was the same. I hated it and I wouldn't go for it. But you're supposed to be on, like, selling them a shampoo and you're supposed to be on selling them a hair wax and then making them come in for a fucking blow dry and, a you know, never stop trying to sell. As soon as they're in that chair, they're your captive audience for selling, aren't they? Oh, God, I used to hate that shit. But some hairdressers, you know, that's how they make their money. That's why they're successful businesses. So, you know, welcome to the real world. There should be, you should be able to spend your money over and over and over again on a variety of different things. So let me give you an example yeah, here. Yeah, it's like that's one of the things that Tower of Fantasy doesn't really do a very good job on. To be fair, like, I, I mean, Rich spent like five grand. I, I spent like two. Like, we pretty much beat the game. Like, well, now what? Well, what if you want to spend ten? Well, you can't really do that. It, 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 it's <laughs> just have to wait, don't they? They just have to wait for the next uh, character to drop and the next thing to come out. But yeah, agreed. You know, it seems a bit strange that a game that's fishing for whales would cap out at 10 grand not lucrative it, it's not a good idea but yeah but they'll come with new banners yeah but the game will be dead by then so it won't matter true from genshin impact you may notice that the hero is something you can pull 
that can go up to five stars. Yeah. But also, all of their items and weapons can oh, be yeah. pulled that go up to five stars. How convenient. So every time you play this game, there is an infinite different number of directions that you can be uh, spending money to try and level up. One thing they... It's not, not infinite, is it? It's characters... And then once you've got the characters, it's duplicating them five times, which does seem initially like, oh, good, at least I get something for a duplicate. But then actually, like, it's tricking me into having to get them five times. And then it's their weapons. And then it's the, then it's the materials to ascend all those things to top level. But it is limited. It's not unlimited. Unless you wanted ten weapons for it, you know, but you can't wield ten weapons, so... Ever, I know, Rich, ever... like, is, is that thing where, like, uh, we were gonna get this stuff paid for, uh, is, is that still happening? Like, yeah, is that, is that happening? Because, like, if I play this game, I got you, alright, that's good. Because I don't know if it is. What is for you to be like, okay, I finally got it. There's no amount of money that can get you perfection in this game, and there's constantly adding more to make sure that's not the case. So Agree with that, agree with that. I think you would have to spend an extraordinary amount of money to say I've got a complete set of, you know, as a collector, everything in five star, all of the weapons, everything ranked up nicely. I think you would have to spend an extraordinary amount of money to make that happen, yeah. Of course. I don't think they do. But I don't think that's what the aim is, remember. For me, and I've explained it in other videos, so I'm not going to go over it too much because we're getting on now, aren't we? Three hour stream, only halfway through this video, and I might have to take a pause. <laughs> uh, but uh, and in fact, I will take a pause at this one, Tactic 5. But for me, that is... Uh, you know, spending an extraordinary amount, uh, spending an extraordinary amount of money on Genshin Impact to get everything is probably not what it's designed for. I don't think any one person is supposed to get everything necessarily. I think more likely you get the things that you like or you go for or you got, and you do it your way, and that's how it comes out. In the same way as you don't go into the the car garage and say, "I'll take a Lamborghini and a Ferrari, and I'll have a." Uh, one of these, and I'll take all the cars. In fact, now it's not like that, is it? In life, so you know, you go into you go into the restaurant, and you order one meal off the menu. You don't order all the different food off the menu at the same time, so you can sit down and have it all. Unless you're King Henry the Eighth and you're Boris Johnson with your great big chuffing, gropey dinners. Like it's you know, it's in the rest in the real world. Like the rest of us, like you're a collector, but you're realistic with your expectations. Yeah, same here. Like even collectors who collect really expensive shit in life, like. Um, you know, collect like look at Pokemon cards. Like, do people ha expect to have the full set of all the cards? Maybe they do, and then maybe they go for all the foils, and then maybe they go for duplicates. And like, maybe you can keep collecting forever. Yeah, maybe you can. Like, maybe you can keep collecting antiques forever, or maybe at some point you say, "These are the ones I've got, and I'm not going to own all of the cards, <laughs> and I'm not going to own all of the antiques." And like, this is my little collection. And I, I, I'm glad, I'm happy with it. In the same way with your characters. Uh, with your computer games, same thing. I don't think anyone out there has bought all the games. And it, only streamers and you know people on the internet maybe, but you know how many people, even those that collect computer games, have got all of the games? Doesn't it seem a little bit of a stretch? I mean, maybe you could, maybe you could get all of the games. There's a limit, there's a finite amount, but it doesn't matter what you're collecting in life. It does seem like a stretch to think that you would complete the entire collection outright with the exception of football stickers or, you know, you know what I'm saying? With the exception of something that you can go and buy in the shops. Uh, yeah, so I think that's okay. I think that's okay that it's a bit difficult to max out. But again, I don't think it's designed for any one person to max out. But it is. it does seem like the perfect system for a game that wants to be open-ended with its like uh, certainly four years is longer than any game has attempted to keep going for like world of warcraft didn't realize they'd be going for that long but they wanted an online mmo ongoing they had different expansions it kept going but genshin impact has planned for a four-year structure breath of the wild came out on cartridge and the next one's coming out in a couple of years you don't like this is slightly different isn't it so uh there's their system of monetization that allows players to keep engaged over a longer period of time and to as the guy said go in whatever different direction if you like the weapons you can roll for the weapons and if you like the opera singer character you can wait for her to come around and you can get a c6 opera singer like different directions so a bit of diversity there as well this system allows for it so i do think whilst we're critiquing it and we're going to come back to tactics all this rest of this video i'm going to have to come back to another time like not tonight, maybe tomorrow, because I need to finish soon. But 
And I've got to edit this tomorrow now. Um, so let's go back into the world of Genshin Impact while I'm just saying this last bit then. Uh, if you put on the, the system, you know, if you put out in front of us all the different options for monetization, we could have said you buy it outright, and that's what I wanted. Or a subscription, maybe not as happy with that, but, you know, would accept it, and you get everything. All of the characters, this season subscription or battle pass or whatever you call it, you, you, your one off a payment for this season will get you all of this stuff. You play the game, you get it all in reward. Yay, everyone's happy. That's what I wanted. And you could still do that. But once if I grind hard and get all the stuff early, what am I doing for the next two weeks? That happens in games. People switch off from the, the expansion because they finish the content. Whereas with this, there's no switching off. They've, they've looked at these other... Okay, so that system isn't as good as this, is it? For the player base, for the monetization. But like I'm saying for the players, for me, for me to want to keep playing... For me to have objectives every every day. Um, oh look, this is the chat. What? <laughs> oh, it's not. It isn't voice chat, is it? That's good. I'm glad it's not voice chat because you could have anyone saying anything. But this is the chat. What? Look at these pictures. We really need to start getting some emojis for our stream, don't we? I'm going to hire an artist. I really am. There's money in the kitty for it now, and um, I'm going to hire an artist. It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. I thought that when I pressed that emoji, I thought that the emoji did the poetry, but it was him doing it. So I'm going to have to turn that off now, because otherwise that's going to be on the screen all the time. <laughs> Amazing. It's good that they don't have... Uh, I mean, I suppose you choose your friends, don't you? So then if friends say rude things, you can go, Oh, I don't like that. And then you get rid of them. But uh, I like Nintendo for not having voice chat. And everyone was like, Oh, yeah, I've got voice chat on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, my God. Like, but then I listened to the voice chat on the Xbox when I was playing Call of Duty. And I was like, I don't want this in my ears. I don't want these people saying these things. Like, and if you've got kids or whatever, and you leave them playing Mario, you don't want to come back and have them listening to... Whatever on the voice chat, do you? Exposed to the world on voice chat. It's better just to keep it away, keep it off. Fortnite's got it, but, you know, that's on them. Nintendo are not responsible. So, yeah, really interesting look at all this stuff. And it's actually made, do you know what? Strange, we're only halfway through that video, but it's actually made me feel more comfortable about the monetization system because I'm not spending any money and I'm getting a real good go at what everyone else gets. And actually, when you think about it, like when you think about it, because, you know, I'm a primos and I've got 10,000 primos and i uh, got all these characters. You know, I don't have to go over it and over it. I'm not showing off, but like, I've got all this stuff, yeah. When you think about it, it's like I'm in the casino for free. I'm playing for free. I'm enjoying it. Everything's a win for me. Imagine if there was a subscription and I played for free. I don't get anything. Imagine if it was buy the cartridge and get it all on cartridge. We don't get half of the game. We only get a quarter of the game. And you either buy it or you don't. So if I didn't buy it, I don't get anything. If I did buy it, I only get a quarter of the game. Because you can't fit it all on the cartridge. It's not a four-year game now. It's a, it's a two-year development game. If my calculations so, are correct... Wandwin Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Like for me, Might the free to play player. Detour to our adventure? And for a lot of people out there, you know, free to play players. Actually, quite nice, isn't it? That I don't have to spend anything, I get everything. There's nothing locked behind anything. There's no, like, you don't reach level 50 until you spend £10. There's no, you know, there's nothing like that, is there? Everything's available to me for free. Any other monetization system, and I have to start paying more money than I'm paying now. And overall, more money is worse than less money for Body me. Mind. Isn't it? Spending more money would be a net negative for me. The only positive... Um, it'll disappear next time you open it. Or just over time. What, what was that? What? Oh, the chat. The chat, right, yeah. The brain. Um, it's a net... I mean, the only negative from spending actual money is that I would get everything for a set price. 
if that price was priced outside my range, if this was a Lamborghini, you don't know where it's priced, is it? What would be the price of Genshin Impact? For a developer, oh, that would be really interesting, wouldn't it? We'd really, really interested to find that out. What a developer would say, regardless of, you know, in most games, having a roster of characters like this is unusual. In most games, having a four-year, like, how many gig of game are we going to get? How many events? How many? Put it all into one cartridge. Put it all into one basket. Tell me how much it would cost in Nintendo terms, in cartridge terms, in Breath of the Wild terms. You know, all these playable characters. It's almost like Street Fighter 2 hasn't got as many characters as this. Like, all the development, all the story. How much does it cost if I don't have gacha, if I don't have microtransaction, but instead I have to pay for it all at once? across the market how does it how does it compare it'd be interesting wouldn't it i expect it would be a lot more expensive than most games you know what we're we saying if you spend 200 what we're we saying if, if it's 200 notes what would you say if genshin impact was 200 dollars but you get everything picked up a fish then but you get everything for 200 dollars would you be happy or less happy than pay to win and you have to do all this shit and gacha it's a really interesting question for me because there'd be a huge amount of people who would never play the game, who would never consider playing the game. It would be considered one of the most expensive games ever. It would be considered to be a bit of a rip-off for that money. Oh, it's a bit like Breath of the Wild. Oh, it's not that different from this. Oh, you, you know, it'd be considered a bit of a rip-off for that money. You'd, you'd sit down knowing you'd spent $200 and you'd think this had better be fucking good. Do you know what I mean? I never <laughs> embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me. I'd be really interested to see where Genshin Impact sits on how much people would be prepared to pay for this and how much it costs per unit if it were to be sold as a as a unit. I'd be really interested to see that. And I would I would guess that we're going to be prepared to spend a little less than it actually costs to make the game overall each on average. You know, I think that's that's the case. I think the gacha system might get a few more people spending a bit more than they thought. But also, there's a few more of us out here that aren't even spending that at all. So I suppose what it really comes down to, and what you said in chat just a little bit ago, is that it's about the market and how predatory it is. And how acceptable it is to predate on those people, children, essentially. Well, those are feeble mind. <laughs> Children and the feeble minded. <laughs> yeah. That used to be a term for people with run. mental health problems or development, <laughs> developmental problems. Obviously, it's not, not considered to be very nice these days to say that. That's why I was joking about saying it, the feeble minded, but uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see when. that's the next chapter I think of that video and our stream uh, we're not going to do a big story now of course it's lovely in the Genshin Impact it's lovely just running around doing nice things we're not going to do a big story now looking forward to tomorrow when I do some editing and get back on to do a bit more of this maybe I mean I want to do this reaction now and get it out of the way before the Sumeru because <laughs> Sumeru is happening on Wednesday isn't it so excite 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 so you'd be good, my little Pukos. You'd be good. I'm going to now go and upload... I'm now going to go and switch on the second computer and start downloading everything we've done today and getting on a timeline. I might not edit it tonight, but at least it'll be there on a timeline. And uh, all in hand for big push this week, Sumeru. At least we don't have to wish on the banner. At least we know that. At least we can skip the banner, save our primos. It gives us a bit. Calculations are correct. Takes the pressure off with our our primo grind, doesn't it? Takes the pressure off with the primo grind. So you be good, remember. And if you can't be good, if you can't be good, I'm going to make you grind for my primos, and you're going to have to send me the primos in the mail. I have to post me the primos at Christmas. I want primos in a Christmas card. So. 